No. Hello and welcome to the Friendly Jimmy's podcast slash live Twitch stream. 2020, uh, I think it's a, I'm going to say it's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Uh, I don't know what date it is. Eight. Do you know this guy? For those playing at home. Wearing that sexy shirt. He's here. And you were about to go away thinking it's just going to be us. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Got to give our usual shout out to the AUWU. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching. Just remember, if you clip us out of context again, I have more than enough information on you and a lot more since you did your last little escapades. So if you want another in-detail video outing you, you know exactly what to do. Clip 20 seconds out of this and we'll go in-depth about your connections to Panthera. Hmm? How about that? <laughs> Just a warning. We will go in depth. Anyway, I don't think we'll be getting cancelled anymore. <laughs> we, we well, I think they should probably wear a diaper. They're yeah, they should. You, you should be fucking wearing a diaper, guys, because let's just put it this way. This isn't even a threat. It's a promise. I will be getting to that at some point. So right, anyway. you can delay the inevitable if you wish. What? Yeah, your love of Pantera the metal band will not be accepted. <laughs> Metallica or Burst. <laughs> uh, give us a little brief overview of Pantera. Yeah, I know this is that. supposed to be the questions <laughs> part, and I'm taking over this time. Mm -hmm. Is that actually a band? Yeah, Pantera. Uh, Pantera were a band formed in the l early '80s in the state of Texas. They started off as a glam band, and then quickly realized that uh, there wasn't a market and it was dying. So they quickly changed to thrash metal, going on to be one of the big four of metal pioneers, Anthrax, Metallica, Pantera, and Megadeth. For <laughs> I mean, they are the wop, wop, yeah. wop, wop of those four bands. Because if you had said Limp Bizkit, it would have been... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think you are forgetting one of the pillars in metal by not giving them their dues. Who? The Limp. But they started in the 90s. Yeah, well, and I was look, being contextually then, accurate. It wasn't true. He's an academic when it comes to this shit. But I suppose how metal got its uh, roots in classical music. Yeah. And it started there. Yeah. yeah. So really, you could just be saying that Beethoven was one of the integral four to metal. But you I could. Think that we all know that it was definitely Limp the Perfected. <laughs> it ended with the biscuit. Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> How triggered are the stoners in the audience? Oh, are they very, very, are they angry? very. Well, there's a um, lot of people saying that Miss loves speaking facts, though. Um, uh, no, they seem pretty. They seem pretty. No, nah, they seem pretty all right. Don't sully Pantera. Yeah, there's a couple of it. Pantera is so good. A couple of that, but uh, you know, look, I, I'm the first to agree that Limp Biscuit is a band. <laughs> Why do you hate them so much? I thought it'd be your. Jam. I don't hate them. They, 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 they were my formative musical uh, memories. They were, they were, they were the like integral part of my musical awakening. Awakening. In fact, the foundations of Dude, my musical. If awakening. your foundations are limp biscuit, uh, you can only turn out like that. You are. It's a recipe for success, is what I was saying. <laughs> I'm saying I, uh, you're, you're obviously uh, entitled to your own opinion. I'm no, just no, telling you facts. No, I'm saying it's a recipe for wearing a baseball cap your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't this isn't a baseball cap. It. It, it says New York Yankee, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's oh, no so it's just, just New York. Just New York. Just the city. <laughs> That's what he's a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> Everything from the garbage disposal to the mayor's office. Yeah. <laughs> um, Even the meatpacking district. <laughs> so, can I quickly say first of all everyone that is saying um thank you for the cameras and focus i wish i could take credit for this i came prepared to do it but connor who master is connor great who's the who's like the sickest editor actually came and in. is also the man that the character miles from the nanny was based on that's right that's right there you go some trivia Fun for you um he fixed him so thank you connor if you're listening i appreciate that um secondly dude okay what do you jordan so a lot of people are asking us about um, the cricket match. I know you don't know anything about that, but <sighs> would you allow if we devolve like a few minutes into talking cricket? Yes, uh, if you give me a few minutes to show off what the aquarium looks like. Yes, actually, I would more than happily <laughs> we, do that. So we why don't we do this? We just got the focus in. <laughs> and that's changing. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So, <coughs> you miss, can? Miss, when I'm about to like um, 
put the when I put mm -hmm. the camera over there, mm -hmm. you gotta press two. Okay? Slow down there, Jack. Two, two. <laughs> okay. I so like that it's like tit for tat. Four options here. <laughs> this really is the multiple choice in who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> Can he get it right? Let's find out after the break. The break being the camera moving around to a different position. Yeah. Come on down to Aquaristic, where we have both Anubias plants and, of course, ferns, which are closely related to the Anubias plant, though they do have a slightly different leaf. If I would like to show them the difference, this is my petals in life. Sorry, they're, you're indulging it. They're fantastic. <laughs> now, it's simply a matter of pressing number. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. I fixed it. There you go. <laughs> he got there. He wow. got there. That's Ooh. looking great. Let's see what it's the looking nice. thinking. That's look Ali, keep it going. Uh, um, that's looking go Try to get a little bit more of the Amazon vibe. If you're exclusively a hipster, I want to know your opinion on this. Everybody uh, else, I'm going to say that they're thinking. Aquavision. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's talking about the footy or something. Go No, no go. talk about the fish. We'll talk about the footy in a second. Uh, We're talking about looking, the underwater footballs. Everyone at they the can moment, have, fish. Here, yeah, man, have a look. They like it. Good. That's a. That's a. That's all I wanted to know. That's a Ali. You could do. You could be like a documentary filmmaker. Oh, just uh, for Marilini, who just asked what the blue fish are called. They're known as a neon tetra. They're available Back in both uh, uh, pet stores and wholesale retailers. Very, I, very. No, there's no goldfish in there. Right? Don't be silly. Goldfish. I learned. I think I, I learned from Jordan. Eat everything. Did you know that? For those playing at home, they eat everything. Is that correct? Uh, well, this is just a general rule of thumb mm -hmm. for anybody who is <laughs> thinking of entering the exciting world of aquarium hobbies. A fish that can fit another fish in its mouth <laughs> will probably eat that fish at some point. Look, I it's a fish eat fish world <laughs> down there. It's Thank the more you know. The more you know. So what you want to be looking for is small fish hanging out with small fish, or possibly a very Enjoy. large fish with a small mouth. Yeah. Okay. The, Round the twist, oldest brother character of the sea world. So, what happens in a situation? This is what I want to know. You've got you've got a fish that's a certain size. Let's say just pick a size in there. If you start with another fish the same size, right, and then you incrementally by millimeters were to ex you make it bigger and to ABC seven hundred two make <laughs> it make it Finally, bigger and bigger. Finally, a podcast that I can appreciate. <laughs> At what point will that fish eat the other fish? Huh? If you can exponentially grow it. As soon as it can fit it in its mouth, it'll have a go. Really? And there are numerous people taking people to fish vets, which are always Vietnamese. Fish vets. And saying, and saying like, my rare fifth put another fifth in its mouth. It couldn't fit. Now he's choking. And there will be this fish halfway going. Like, no. Ah, ah, ah. Dude, nature is So they'll have brutal. a go. Nature's brutal. This, this is Joe Rogan there. Dude, nature is bad. It's a, it's a. It's brutal. It's a, Predator eat prey Yo, world man, out I've there. Seen like, I've seen like a, a no, mouse. No wonder that show is so popular. Mouse. <laughs> it, it is spitting facts. It, it is. Spitting fact. It is nature not wild? Wow. wow. That, that's it's crazy. Society's wild. Dude. I mean, it just went to Bondi Junction. That was wild. I've yeah. seen plenty of animal documentaries to know that that is fucked. What? Um, nature, sorry. I saw this documentary recently on YouTube. Dude. Okay, I wasn't aware of this. Maybe this was common knowledge. But you know how fucking crazy chimps are? Yes. Oh, is this... Uh, I knew that. Is this about the real-life Caesar from Planet of the Apes? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like they, they're just... They have civil wars. It was uncanny. I thought I was watching a documentary on, like, fucking Afghanistan or something. Yep. They had their tribes. They Use hand wars. signals like in the Vietnam They War. had co coerced assassinations. That's exactly they basically the were following the Israeli model. Of <laughs> <laughs> I am not... I, no, let's just be honest. They're just following the model of politics. They, yeah, yeah, that's like a, they, Isn't that amazing that it just doesn't change? They're just following the model for survival, like sophisticated survival. It's, it's just, uh, I don't even know if it's survival. I think it's because bonobos do not do that. Well, but here's the thing. Bonobos Isn't live it bonobos? in an area. Isn't it bonobos? Maybe it's one of those. Yeah, potato, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shape potato. Sorry, go on. A, Some people say yogurt. Apparently, bo bonobos <laughs> live do. in an environment that's a lot more resource rich, so they don't have to be that ruthless. What's the resource rich about it? More strawberries. Yeah, more strawberries, more things. Dude, like, uh, <laughs> Just in coals, no one chimps, notices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chimps are insane. Chimps would, they, they sometimes just 
rip apart little monkeys because you wouldn't rip apart monkeys and eat them if you were living in a resource rich area. That's why they kept like in this particular civil war. I think this was somewhere yeah, in Congo. Would. No, but yeah. like if you are satisfied with a lot of it's it's like humans. Why do you think like people in Australia are way less uh, angry? Because like all our needs are met. But if you go into a third world country, it's a dog eat dog world out there. There's less fish resources over there. Mm. It's, it applies to see casino New South Wales, <laughs> where the only resource is beef. But you do need other things to stay alive, though it can clothe and feed you. But you do need shelter. Casino beef is jerky. Good beef. Huh? Casino is good beef. I don't think you need anything else. Yeah, that's true as well. And I suppose you can turn the hooves into glue and then make like a you know a, a shanty out of rock. So look, casino doesn't have an excuse. Maybe Central Africa does, but I think that the reason that they were doing that is as a show of that. That was his way of cobbling together an alliance that he gave out to the other male chimps that were his muscle because he was mm. a bit scrawnier and older than the others. But it was all triggered by that one alpha chimp that was like benevolent and nice and he was killed by one of the chimps and then the, the, the chimp that killed that, this isn't a human, these are animals, killed that alpha, ends up taking over and is just a bad guy. Really? He changes the culture of the tribe. So it's basically then real then life animal farm. Then, yeah. then what happens is- It is animal farm. It is animal farm. It's animal. It's animal, <laughs> animal house. So once this animal guy tree. is killed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but you know what? They do sort of farm. So it is animal, wow. extremely primitive farm. Wow. I wonder if they they use tools. They but use what tools, was, what was but they also for? put things in the ground and then come back to them later. Damn. That is yeah, a form yeah, yeah, of yeah. agriculture, right? Is, like, I, I, yeah, my it mind is. has changed. They are way more. So, so, so the, 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 le the leader gets killed, right? Then yeah. the bad guy takes over. He changes the culture, becomes way more ruthless. Mm. Then a bunch of chimps end up deserting, going into a different area, starting their own clan. And that's what the civil war was. It was this clan versus the other clan Whoa. trying to fight over territory. And the bad guy mm. was winning because he was ruthless. He would do, uh, he would do assassinations yeah, that's on the other side. He would look for wow. a particular yeah. member, documentary. beat the shit out of them, kill them, slowly, slowly killed all of the people from the different tribe, took over their territory. A handful of them were left and they had to abandon. They went to some other part of Africa. Wow. And this, these are animals. These aren't humans. Anyone that doesn't believe in evolution and Darwin, you're on the wrong pod, all right? <laughs> you, you need to tune into f the Family Fred First Niles. pod. Yeah, Family First pod's also a Do you think that's choice. a pod? Man, if they aren't, they should get on it because <laughs> that's how they're going to get more seats in the Senate. By embracing new media and spreading forth the message that family matters. <laughs> yeah, and that's the only policy. Don't worry about economics, just family matters. Hey, Have release it on December the 25th, the most family-friendly day of the year. <laughs> Uh, oh, but man. the documentary that I saw was different to that, Ali, because the good guy was winning that one. Maybe it's been And the good point. guy, I think it's actually a really good example of how the world works. So that wasn't the is same the one. The guy ended up forming a chimp empire. Well, I think and he was uh, we might be of thinking other about the same person. To him. But, think, but, that but that I, I thought he was a bad guy and you thought he was a good guy. I think that's what may have been happening. Well, that dude, doesn't this really guy, explain our politics, does This it? guy was horrible. This chimp was a bad guy. But he wasn't getting resources for the rest of his clan? No, no, he was. But he was doing it in like the most brutal way possible. Because this guy was not doing it in the most brutal way possible. This guy was really... <laughs> now, it might have, uh, sorry, I might have seen a documentary about family first. Like, <laughs> that's all he was doing. What? He was looking after his family first. Oh, he was see. looking after his tribe and he was expanding into other territories of other chimp areas mm. and taking their prime agricultural land and pushing them out because he just had so much muscle behind him. <laughs> really, it was he, more mafia. But mafia, as we were saying yeah. before, there, there's not that much difference between the mafia and politics. Yeah. yeah. No, dude, that was, that was basically the beginnings of a political society. That was Damn. how most political societies are formed. There's usually a power struggle. There's a civil war. The victor takes over. And that's when you get a country and you start building on shit. <laughs> Until the this next is civil something war. that we've been touching on a lot recently in this <laughs> podcast. Oh, no. We're a podcast that says touching on now. Finally. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, no. 
You either have to be Sam Harris or Oprah to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Touching on. <laughs> no, come on. But, but <laughs> we've been talking about it a lot recently, which is that I swear ideology is bullshit. It's a thing that people that understand politics use to get what they want. Because mm. homo sapiens have that little trick in their head that there is a man in the sky and that's why we should all band together to kill the Neanderthal. Mm. But mm. the one that understands that is the true political mastermind that is coming up with those images to spread forth their version of power, I suppose, which I don't even think really comes down to an ideology. It really is just resource extraction. That's all the chimps cared about. That's all they wanted it's is hard, better yeah. tasting berries. And who doesn't? I know Miss Love loves that. <laughs> I like the blue ones because they're full of fiber. <laughs> um, Zinc. He would be following that chip to his day. Oh, he's, yeah. like, he's got some good ideas. Well, yeah. dude, I followed you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, look, at this, look at his mouth. It's pretty chimpy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do do that face a lot. <laughs> and this is, yeah, I'm turning into an orangutan. Uh, <laughs> no, look, I, I think it would be hard to argue. It's one of those things where it's like when you, as soon as you start to discuss co uh, concepts of uh, ideology and politics and philosophy and right and, and right and wrong and all of these kind of philosophies, then it's so easy to just sort of, you know, believe them wholeheartedly and just be like, coming from a place of like philosophy and the human spirit. But if, if you, if you present that idea as that idea that you just did about being like, it's all about resources extraction, extraction. And then you look at the blueprint of history. I mean, it's kind of undeniable, at yeah. least even if, even if you deny that they're like intrinsically linked, those things happened. Everything tends to be about resource extraction. Everything tends to be about making money or making, uh, just getting those resources, getting that's how you get wealthier. Do you know what I mean? Look, Pearlhead does have a good counter to this argument, mm. which is look fat. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's one if there's one thing if there's one point to argue against, it's that. Have you guys have you guys <laughs> heard of the Chief Chimp? The Yuval Hariri theory. Well, it's not a theory. He's like his, in his book Sapiens, he sort of looks at things like that. Have you read and it? He yeah. I haven't read it. And he 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 basically points out Something that's kind of obvious, but we never think about it. It's like how most of the things around us are fake. Like they're just stories that we've built around. Ideologies, uh, anything like money. Most of the things that we do, actually like these stories have made us into a great civilization, but they're kind of, they're, they're fake news. They're, they're yeah. not actually real. But the part that he adds, mm -hmm. because you get to that realization, I think when you're 19, yeah. you think, what does it all mean, man? Yeah. No, nah, I'll finish my degree. <laughs> hey. But uh, just, uh, speak for yourself. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was going to say, like, yeah, you should do a biopic in my life. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, go on. I know. Uh, but the interesting point that he adds to it is, no, those stories are actually really beneficial. That's true. I'm not denying that they're beneficial. Have you also, have you, do you know how he differentiates between what's real and what's a story? Mm -mm. So he, he, and I would want to get your opinion on this. So he reckons this is how you differentiate between what's a story and what's real. If something suffers, it's real. It's a very Buddhist way of looking at it. So for example, during the second world war, Germany is bombed, right? Germany doesn't suffer. Germany is just a construct that we've made. People in Germany suffer. So people are real. It's just a way for him to differentiate what's a story and what's right. not a story. And you know what else is real? Plaz. Plaz is definitely real. <laughs> but it's not a story. <laughs> but, it's but he is too real. Yeah, too He's good the a story. realest of them all. But doesn't but doesn't language check out that album? Uh, I, I can't even tell anymore. Is that ideology or not? <laughs> That's his know. ideology. Realist in word. That's his uh. album. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is You're not giving him enough credit. One of his albums is called Aristotle. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Jesus. He was a, he, he uh, sorry, he is a visionary. <laughs> I, I think, I, I don't even know if you're being joking anymore, Ali, because like, I think we're both on this train. Plies is one of our favorite musicians of all time. And we're not even being Let's ironic when we say musician. that. That's not That's a bit of a... <laughs> well... As Joan King used to say all the time, this is not music, this is noise. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, Joan King's making the most sense, you know? I know, he goes full sense. Maybe he's right about everything. Maybe he is. It is a flat earth. <laughs> Those ideas do intrigue me. 
He uh, would. <laughs> That's why. Because I remember once uh, uh, Miss Love's Piccolo twin, let's say, your Kame right. and your friend <laughs> yes. Borgino is the Piccolo of you. Don't use the one name that's <laughs> easiest to <laughs> find. I would identify the man. Fuck. Let's would just say that? his name. <laughs> Gee, Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're live on Saturday Night New York. But just like a Dragon Ball Z, everyone loves Piccolo. And yeah. Very handsome. No, it's, who cares? It's all good. But yeah. But, uh, no, I know, and I, know, I know the thing you're going to say because it's mad. Well, go for you it. go on. So much cricket request. So finish we're doing that, that next. Thought, and then we'll do it. We will go to this next, but mm. I think you were uh, alluding to the this fact. Was, this was, I think most of the events that occurred in my life was when I was 19 and then nothing happened. Nothing. You, you built nothing a, happened until Clive Palmer sued me. So it was just 10 years of nothing. So no work. And then a Clive Palmer going, what the fuck? That was, that, that, that's the timeline. Now, I know that's how it was in your mind, but there was a few more posted notes being stuck on this, on the wall than you remember. In the oh, there was time. a lot. Yes. Don't that, that leave them My decade was Have just filled with going to office work. Huh? He had to take him off. His dad made him, I think. Oh, How annoying is that? You should have taken a picture that of that. That, that, was, that was really cool. Yeah, that should have gone up in like the- like recipe for success. Yeah. It should be, it should be there, there, if you write a self-help book, that photo needs to be in it. Yeah, and it's gone. That is a recipe for success, by the way. You put in front of the wall that you are most likely to wake up to first thing in the morning, a bunch of quotes that you like. Yep. Hot tip. I've done it. Now let's talk about the people who didn't do that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this was like when we were 19. They went to my house. I wasn't at my house. I don't know how they got in, but that's just how we roll. That's how. That, that's a pretty good indication of uh, Jordan's psyche. And I like that. You know, it's mad. Like, yeah, we, we, we were in his house somehow. And he wasn't in the state, I don't think. I don't, I don't think he was in the country. Maybe he weren't in the country. But, I, but that's also, that's very, not to dox you, but I'm not going to say the suburb, but that's very... Uh, uh, that's very the beaches, isn't it? I'll just come over whenever you want, man. Yeah. Um, uh, stuff in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's some pickled onions. I guess that's food. Well, it is for me. <sighs> Are you trying to can shut us down? What's happening? I forgot to start recording, but it's okay. That's yeah, all right. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it's the switch. video off of Twitch. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, um, uh, yeah, but yeah. we were there, and so was Piccolo, mm. and so was Torbs. Yeah, from you weren't there, yeah. Uh, and Torbs from Yilmaz had reached his final form. The freezer of our group, I suppose. <laughs> the bomb, and he was yeah. in his perfect form, which of course is a Norwegian man that is walking around with a tie-dyed singlet on that has a hemp leaf on it. Mm -hmm. And the longest dreads I've ever seen in my life. And I know for a fact that Jamaicans do not shave off their dreads ever in their entire life because that's against their religion. His were longer at 19. Just <laughs> like, you know, draped along like his Cinderella <laughs> on the ground. Jesus. And he oh God. is, has obviously, like all of us, Forbes. instead of instead of like going to university, you go to find yourself, which means that you get a PhD in smoking bongs. And he was at that stage where he was having bucket bongs. So you can imagine the type of information that guy's getting into right doesn't go to university watches heaps of youtube like all stoners do really into conspiracies pretty much to the same point that dome kang was except for instead of going down that ultra christian rabbit hole he went down listening to bob marley <laughs> but both of them just really religious i suppose in their own ways <laughs> yeah he bought out because it was re it was pretty it was a pretty recent and fringe view that no one had heard at that point yeah. Which was, was it? just at the crack of, did you know that the earth is flat? And there's actually a way to get to the other side in Antarctica. He busted that out. Yeah. Now, obviously, Kame, Miss Love, <laughs> is very interested in that. It's an interesting It really point. explains the difference between Piccolo and Kame. They are the <laughs> same person, but he wants to listen to... Anything, Anything that like re is remotely close to the Tree of Life shop in the mall. So even if it's a Dollar Shave Club, he's in there. He's in there to hear their theories yeah. and views. So he was all up for listening to this. Mm. Well, evil Piccolo sat there like he's 19-year-old Christopher Hitchens saying, preposterous, absolutely insane. I'll smoke your weed, sir, but I will not <laughs> let you finish your sentence. Net out. I am leaving. I am leaving if you continue down this yeah. path of insanity. Yeah. Dude, it was at that point because 
Miss and I have been talking about that ever since. I hate it. And it's something that like I always see in the pod comments here as well. No offense, guys. Thank you for subscribing <laughs> and being like our bread and butter. I really appreciate that. But also, every time we talk about star signs, people are not on board and it pisses me off. I'm on, I, look, That's I, pretty much the point of that entire <laughs> story. I just like talking about magic. I know it's not real, but it's more hey, interesting than facts sometimes. Hey, how do you know crazy. it's not I, real? I, let's, it, let's leave yeah. some for mystery. Look, I, so is, you know yeah. what? Ali is sort of joking, but he's sort of not. No. I know Ali. <laughs> and he's just better at hiding how superstitious he is. I'm not. Yeah, it, It's a struggle because remember like how I was really into reading palms and shit. Mm. That's What do you mean were? Well, I don't read about it anymore. Right. It was. I thought you, a, a I thought you were doing a thesis. On palmistry, it's it's just hundred thousand dollars. That's the whole <laughs> thing, right? Like it's just can't we just sit there and like hear him out? I just want to I, hear him out. I just want to entertain the idea. Dude, it's, it's not a, like I'm going to sit there tomorrow and say, "Yeah, Atlantis clearly exists." Speak for yourself, all right? I think it's mad. Yeah, I'm on board. Ali probably thinks it exists. Yeah, but going into that little uh, well, I don't think it probably exists. I think it. I say it can. Exist. There's a difference. It probably does not it can. exist. C A N can. Yeah, of course it can. Yeah, it can. I it mean, is. obviously it can. Well, magic. But yeah, like no, I don't know. Like, I just when we were at the mall today, we'll get into this later. But just as a nice little primer for it, we walked into the Tree of Life shop, heaven, and they were just. Like they were just sitting there, just being like, "Yeah, this energy and this crystals, really. Like, can you, can you feel it?" And you're like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, I can feel it." You know, like, but then, like, you 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 went into that bookstore and like they just said, like, you know, it's all about energies. You know, there's just energies everywhere. I was just thinking about that and going, "What a crock!" And then we walked into a hipster bookshop and we're like, "No, energies exist. <laughs> yeah, they're onto something." Also, you know, one of those everyone that was in the Tree of Life shop was a legend. That was spacey and weird. But they were Great. like nice and fun to talk yeah. to. You walk into the hipster bookshop and it's just like, oh my God, I don't know if staring at each other is racist or not. And it's just like, Ugh. Jesus Christ. Actually, we've got, we've got a, a very important story related to today's uh, Christmas shopping that Jordan and Miss Love did. You guys want to stay on for this, but we'll do it on the main podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all happening this podcast. It's all Cricket, happening. This me complaining about going to the shops. Yeah. You'll only find this crystal yes. on 2GB and, and on 702, and we've got where they will be those hipsters that'll be too scared to say what they actually mean. We've got a game as well. Plus, Boys are going to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire today? Plus crystals <laughs> and, the, uh, and, and the added bonus of finding out if the crystals made my hand go tink, tink, like tingly. And spoiler alert... They did. Ooh. All right, so we'll be back from the break, uh, and uh, we'll dig into the main pod, and we will... Was Glenn Maxwell... Why am I the only one that cares about these kids? Was Glenn Maxwell robbed of a test cricket career? We're going to jump... Yes, let's, let's, let's talk about that once we get on the pod. So. The big questions coming up. So See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast, where today we're going to talk about... A lot of things, including um, the Trick. Yemen Civil War. Yeah, we're going to talk about. We're going to play a game. Who wants to be a millionaire with the boys? And, and of course, uh, Jordan, the cultural civil war. And Jordan has an incredible story to tell today, which we will get to after the cricket segment, because it's going to be real quick. On the pod, no, we are on, we are the, on the, pod. the pod. I thought this is Twitch. We're twitching. This. I'm just going to ignore that because I don't think you realize what your job is. Well, Twitch he probably <laughs> just learned before this started that it wasn't called Twitch Talk. I mean, these Twitch and podcasts are. That's where we do a. I I, I don't know if I want to explain this. Like, I really don't. I don't think, I don't think this deserves an explanation. Hi, Twitch. This I can see you. I know and you're the watching. Podcast. We are doing. I the podcast. know you're watching. Um. Yeah, Miss probably thinks that he's on Wide World of Sport at the moment, <laughs> and that it's Sunday, and that you're Ricky Ponting. <laughs> Punter. Uh, Who's Punter? Ricky Ponting. Punter. Ricky Ponting. Are you calling Punter? Um, God, thank you for educating me on this. You know what I will say before this is a precursor? I was noticing that a lot of people in the comments were saying, yeah, I don't particularly like it when you guys talk about horoscopes. Fair enough. But they were also saying that 
They don't mind it because it's kind of just interesting hearing about it. I swear that's me with pod, with with sport. It's kind of yeah, just yeah. like never going to watch this, but go on. Tell me <laughs> so there's why a controversy. Warty's hair was so blonde. There's, there's a controversy. So <laughs> India, India and Australia, they're playing a series, uh, and um, they just won two consecutive T Twenty matches. However, wait, wait, can you just slow this down for a sorry, second? Sorry. India has a cricket team. <laughs> India has the biggest cricket team. They the are minimal. Uh, one point. 5 billion people the I don't know if this is correct but the Indian cricket team coming here the television rights that Fox Cricket um, sold to Indians for was close to around 300 million dollars that's how much power these guys bring into the sport. Hold on a second bad for the entire million. season or for the series yeah between India and Australia one season yeah one series not even a season one series sorry sorry yeah, matches. yeah. Television I'm scared. Rights, television rights, sports rights have gone through the roof. Like, it's the only thing that rates anymore. Yeah, and and also hmm. these so soccer players are being sold for three hundred, four hundred million dollars. The soccer's particularly. Where do you crazy. think that money's coming from? TV rights have gone just berserk. Yeah. And in, in FIFA. cricket, India is a big, big fish. So anyway, so they they were here, right? And this is the controversy. So I don't know if you remember this because you guys don't follow cricket that much. But around, I think, 2015 or 2016, uh, an Australian batsman died. Yeah. Um, Phil Hughes, who was hit on the head with a bounce. He was right here, right? That little tiny exposed. That's right. So yeah. like the most vulnerable part. So he freak. What, that little part at the end of your skull? Yeah. yeah just at the back. It's the most exposed block. bit. Boom. Yeah. It is actually. Why does that kill you? Because this is strong. The that's neck so is much soft. nerves. Also oh, broke his neck. It broke his neck, and that's Jesus. where like your nerves are going to your brain. It's really so sad, but yeah, brutal. he died. It but is sad, like, but I will say this: probably one of the best deaths of all time. What are you talking about? Died doing what he loved. Boom. Well, and uh, it is. <laughs> that's one way. It to was look a at pleasure it. doing this podcast, everybody. I really appreciate. <laughs> but there it. is, the, but like I'd I gotta say, like there's there's, than, yeah. there's much worse ways to go. It was what Caesar yeah. was saying, like just before he was getting assassinated. He was like, "How would you want to die?" And he was saying, "Sudden." Right, I think yeah. he's right. I read another news. Well, he loved cricket, I suppose. But this couple, yeah. <laughs> this couple in Queensland oh, died because their house got burned down. How much more do you want to die with like a cricket ball hitting your head than like slowly dying in a burning house? So it was yeah. like my granddad. What? He was a farmer. He was out on his tractor. His tractor hit a ditch, bumped at the top, gone. No, are you I serious? Was just like, dude, props. Was this an that's a good life? Was this in Australia? Or is yeah. This I mean, Where do you think he's from? <laughs> Scotland? <laughs> that is Scottish. I don't know. He probably thought he was in Scotland. Right. right. He was in Australia. He might as well. He was actually a Croat. Oh, really? He was on that side. Damn. But, sorry, I don't know why we just went on to, you know, no, if, if I really want that to happen, honestly, I just want someone from Asia to come in while I'm asleep. You kind of do that. Hey, I do want that to happen. <laughs> so since be exciting. On, this, on, on the trajectory you're going, you've got a couple <laughs> of years. <laughs> Um. <laughs> so once once Phil Hughes died, they put in these new laws, which are concussion laws. So as soon as anyone gets hit on the head, even slightly, as a rule, a physio would come in. They would do an assessment. And even if you think you're ready to play, they'll often take you off. And so the cricket teams, I'm going to get to the controversy. And so the nah, cricket teams were saying, they were protesting, well, that kind of sucks because what are we going to do with the extra player? We need 11 players to play for the team. And this is going to put us in a disadvantage. So then they said you could substitute a player. If this happens, you can get another player who can also bat and bowl and field, just like anyone else, which was a concession that they gave to players exclusively for the ones that get concussed. Now, India came here, and uh, in, an Indian batsman who was hitting the ball out of the park with every ball, he was killing it. Hitting him for he, he gets He gets hit on the head, um, and then... Normally, the procedure goes that someone needs to come out and he needs to go in. He kept playing. He and actually ended up hitting a few more sixes after that. He goes into the innings break, and when they're about to come out to bowl, we hear, like as in like the Australian team and like the rest of the world hears, that he has a concussion and he's not going to play. Fair enough. Safety comes first. But what they ended up doing yeah, was... How do you know that you've got a concussion? Well, the doctors would assess it. I'm not, I have no idea how you do it. But like, they just ask not you, all there? They ask you like yeah. really basic questions like, what team are you playing against? And if you right. can't answer it straight right. away, then there's a problem. Right. Disorientation. There's yeah. a bunch of tests that they can do. Yeah. Yeah, but he was still hitting sixes. He's fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not saying that he was fine. You can still hit sixes and you can be concussed. But the, the controversy came uh -huh. that once they came back on the field, they got a specialist spinner. So basically, they played an extra batsman 
And then when they, when the substitute player came in, the substitute player was a specialist bowler spinner. So hold our on, team. On. Oh, so the Aussies got their own switch out. Is that no, what no, you're no, no. The Aussies got pissed off at this because wait a sec, wait a sec. So they brought Aaron in their Finch. own. So wait, he was just like. So wait, in, just to clear this up. So India were like he's concussed. We're shending on an a uh, 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 what do you call it? Exchange batsman. And a spinner for no reason. No, 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 no. So what? So the usually the rule is, or it's not a rule. It's an unsaid understanding that if a player gets concussed and you need to bring a substitute, you need to bring someone that has a similar skill set mm. that would be equivalent to the guy that yeah, you're. Yeah, but they're facing. Off. They don't. Why would they need a bowler? India was batting. They're facing. India was initially batting. The guy gets concussed. Yeah. There's an innings break. Now India needs to come out to bowl. Oh, but okay. instead of getting a guy that was similar to the guy that got concussed, oh. they got a specialist spinner because they knew they're not batting again. Yeah. They're only bowling, so they may as well. So get they something. tactically sent so, that out. Yeah. I don't yeah, know so why they, this is such a controversy. It's not, but like our because our, it's not cricket. That's why. <laughs> so our Australia, so our captain, our coach, uh, got pissed off at that, and we did a little pro. So the controversy right. is sour grapes. Or a legitimate protest. We should all weigh in. Is it really the gentleman's sport? Surely polo is the gentleman's <laughs> sport. <laughs> is that even played And why anymore? is it that televised? Is that play? Uh, I don't, you know, when we went to Pakistan, <laughs> Ali's cousin got us into a really ritzy villa that was like, like I was like, I'm, I, I the thought Ibis that Hotel. Pakistan, you couldn't go into India. We were staying in the Taj Mahal, okay. pretty much. It okay. was so elite. Damn, that's cool. And I remember being in the lobby waiting and there was a DVD continuously playing going, I don't know, welcome to Raj Hotel. Very expensive, very swanky. Look, we have an American food buffet. No pork dough, but we do have beef bacon. But the other thing is, if you feel like playing polo, but you don't have enough people to play, that's fine. Please call room service, and we will get our professional polo team to play with you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why didn't I come on this trip? <laughs> Isn't it absurd? <sighs> yeah, this it's did. amazing. Absurdly it's amazing. 19th century Eagle in the 21st century. Dude, this, by by the way, this hotel, this was like a, it wasn't a hotel, it was like a club. It was, uh, you only can go there if you've got membership, and one of my dad's friend had it. So we go into this hotel room. For the first, first, it's not a hotel room. It was a fucking suite. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. We walk in, and I hadn't seen like a, a hotel like this before. There was a lounge mm. and there were multiple, it's like a fucking apartment. It was basically an apartment inside of a hotel. And Ali's billionaire cousin or whatever comes in and says like, is the room good enough? I apologize. It is very <laughs> substandard. It's all they had. Oh my God. <laughs> Believe me, he was I apologizing <laughs> for the best room I've ever stayed in by a mile. Yeah, the room of Polo Ground. <laughs> and he was too. This is the other thing. You need to fact this. Yeah. He was really sorry. <laughs> 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 so apologetic. I am very. I will be very, very uh, quick to remind the staff that the hand should not stop. I can do that straight away if you want. I can do it now. Uh, he probably did do that. <laughs> um, that is that's wild. That's that's wild. So now all that all the, all of you guys who wanted to hear about cricket. I you have their opinion on it. Can I weigh in on it? Can I weigh <laughs> yeah, in? Pakistan's you funny. Want I want to weigh in on that. Okay, let's do it. Here's my two cents. It's virtually impossible slash very, very, very hard to be able to determine people's specific skill set, especially comparatively when you're substituting players. So I think that in this particular instance, this rule will always be exploited by anyone playing. So I think that it is sour grapes. You should let it be and learn to use the rule. That's, that's the nature of these rules. That, the rule is in place for a good reason. You don't want people to die on the field. But it's impossible to to police it. It's impossible. Yeah. And then you know what will happen? If they try to police it, some will slip through the cracks, some won't. Who's to say someone doesn't start training a pace bowler to be pretty good at spin and not ever spin bowl for the tiny percentage of time when that'll happen? Mm. And it's like they've got the ace in the hole. Damn, this our, our, our pace bowler is an amazing spin bowler, but no one on earth knows this has been training to be a spin bowler for like three years and quiet. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. That's That's actually... Milan that's Nett. what my opinion is. Do you reckon? Yeah, one hundred percent. And also, that's like what most cricket experts are. I mean, it's right. Uh, I, I am a layman when it comes to sport, and that's why I assume that Policy American analyst. baseball is exactly the same as cricket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the Fun same. Fun fact: It is derived from cricket. I didn't In fact, know that. The U.S. used to be the first ever international cricket match. Here's a bit of trivia for you. No way. It was played between the United States of America and Canada. Really? Yes. No. Before the Civil War, cricket was huge in the U.S. Uh, sorry, not before the Civil War. Uh, 
before yes, war before the civil war it was big but slowly wow. what ended up happening was that there was this um like rejecting of english traditions because yeah. of the like, revolutionary rights so, so they, they quickly, invented baseball so they invented baseball which is a uh, which is derived from cricket i didn't know that okay did you being ignorant by like a roundabout way you were the most right that's crazy i'm scared what the hell even when it comes to too. sport jesus <laughs> that's insane Jeez, I, I have a liar liar problem, except yeah. for like I can't not be correct. I'm sorry, it's just the <laughs> way that it rolls. Good. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but uh that is that is uh the, it, it's interesting it's interesting because like speak talking about because Ali Oh the there cricket's was, on right now. <laughs> That's why. That's well, uh, don't tune in. Okay, Listen to score? us talk no, we'll, we'll about, talk about the how we assume we'll, baseball is the same. <laughs> can sport. someone uh, can someone send me the score? Confirmed. Someone send the score. Yeah. S- send this score, uh, there's this movie called Moneyball. Yes. You seen it? Yes, I have. Is uh, it's got to be one of the most interesting films I've ever seen. Moneyball. So really, it's yeah, it's there's it this gives whole you this movement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Movement. Well, movement of like really uh, making sport really mathematical. Yeah, right. Um, in fact, like... So that's what's happening in cricket. It, England is pioneering that approach, the money ball approach. In fact, recently there was... There's another con- this is a controversy where the England coach from the dugout would put up these sign boards that would say things like 23C. It's a code that no one knows except for them. And the cricket captain would look at it and I don't... Whatever they would end up doing with that, right? And that's very NFL. That's And so that's something that people are now criticizing a little bit too. It's like... But the whole thing comes from like the same money ball theory, like utilize skills. It doesn't matter like how talented, whatever, like whatever they're good at based on statistics. It's all just super mathematical the way they, they do go but, about but it. Don't you think that's very NFL? NFL is all signed. It, it's just code. It's literally just war tactics with like guys with those big uh, like protective outfits on, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's like the Simpsons show. It's like, all right, uh, if I, you know, like, Listen, if I, what is it? Whatever it is, it's like li- throw a bypass ball. Not if I, unless I touch my belt buckle. Not once, not twice, but thrice. If I do this, it's a bye ball. If I, <laughs> and then when he's like at the, t- at yeah, he's the at the thing. He's just like, ding. Uh, <laughs> this insane stuff, and the ball just hits him in the head. It's a great show. Check it out. <laughs> uh, anyway, my point is that's in sport already everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's what's funny. That was the the pioneering of it. He pretty much just noticed that everybody's going for a team of champions and not a champion team. Mm. I suppose is the way to put it. And in fact, he wasn't even looking for a champion team. He was looking for a team of losers with very specific quirks. That's and you know what was an amazing scene that I didn't notice. At the time, and then I started thinking about it because one of those movies you sit there in the shower and you say, "Oh yes, Brad Pitt is a good actor." But that's what you get out of that movie. He's a good you? actor. Yeah. No, you know what you actually get out of that movie? The fat guy from Super Bad can act. <laughs> can you kind of? Can um, uh, now I know what movie you're talking about. My, yeah, Have you seen I, it? No, but I, I thought about seeing it and I was like, yeah, it looks too heady. So I just skipped it. It is too heady. <laughs> like, it's not like, that heady. No, it just looks like, you know, this it's is what I It's not heady enough for Ali. It's too heady for me. This is, this, is what I, this is what I saw when I saw Moneyball. I was like, huh. Um, what was that movie called? Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, I've already seen The Big Short and uh, Wolf of Wall Street. And I assume this is a mash together of those two. <laughs> yeah, You're not wrong. The same vibe. You're not wrong. Wait, is it directed In fact, by the, the stakes were vibe? higher. Yeah, right. Yeah. Huh? I wonder if it, you you are right. Those are very similar movies. I yeah. wonder if they're directed by the same guy. Um, <laughs> well, Scorsese did one. Right. No, 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 they're not. I didn't like Wolf one of Wall Street that much. One was done by Scorsese. <laughs> Everyone was done by the no, Adam non-mafia I know the Wolf of, of Wall Street. Did. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I thought Wolf of Wall Street was kind of lame. It's like, hello, my name is Jordan Belfort. I am an over actor and the only movie that money's good is because we have a lot of money for outlandish set constructions. Sorry, that's not a good story. <laughs> I stole a lot of money. Okay, nah. you're right. You, you don't need to see Moneyball. It is the same film. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Um, okay, so <laughs> I, I agree with you. Chucky Mish. Midgets. Whoa. So, Jordan, I've got a question for you. Well, they should, we, on it. should we start? Should we do the next <laughs> segment? Do you want to tell your incredible tale or do you want to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? No, the first? tale's on the pod, not Twitch. This is pod. Oh, we're on I, the pod. No, we're on Twitch. We're on Miss. 
Just I'll explain to you after the podcast. <laughs> okay. We've been doing this for a long motherfucking time. <laughs> well, what are we going to talk about when the cameras turn off? That's all I'm going to say. We're going to keep talking about Moneyball. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, do you want to tell the story or do you want to do the game first? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's let's. T- okay, but before we do. Again, A-U-W-U, hi, thanks for tuning in. Remember, you clip this, we look into your links to Panthera. I don't think you want that, do you? No, you don't. And you don't want me to keep mentioning it on this pod. So I suggest you stop clipping shit out of context. But if you do, just know this as well, it actually benefits my career. So you're not actually, you know making my life a misery, I actually sit there and think, mad, awesome, I'm going to get a lot of views out of this, but it unfortunately stops us from doing, you wouldn't be accustomed to this, being the heads of AUWU, but good work. We uh, usually are looking into things like the corruption of John Barillaro or Angus Taylor, so maybe just stop doing it so we can get back to our job and doing things of importance. That's pretty much the actual reason that it is. But if you want to get clear, that's fine because we've got a lot of material on you. Panthera, Panthera, Panthera. Now, uh, now, when we go into this, though, so good. Because as, as everyone would know, I'm pretty much just a hermit that stays in this digital wall. I am more or less what you assume PewDiePie is. I, I don't even know if I'm a hologram or not anymore. <laughs> I'm such a simulation that I have to touch myself every now and then. And then even then I'm just like, no, nah, I'm cutting it open. And Okay, well, my hand's robotic, but this is still human. So, um, but, yeah, oh like I, I ventured out because I had to go Christmas shopping. Uh, I, I stopped working today, and I've got to say, it's more of a job going Christmas shopping. You'd know what I mean, wouldn't you, if you're a mum? But this is stupid talking about this on Twitch, but go on. <laughs> There's nothing really that's bad about yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's true. So anyway, we're just walking around in the morning. Remember, he's in the cancel group. <laughs> Unintentionally. What do you mean? I'm joking, I'm joking. Hey, I'm not the one. I I'm think ki- I don't think there's anything cancel worthy no. about this. And I think this well, story find should out be live. told because... There's nothing, there's nothing cares about it. It's just, I think uh, it just shows how idiotic some people are. No, no. It, Anyways, well, well, it's not even... It's, hi- it's hipsters. This is the thing that we're getting to, right? So we're walking around the mall, and I swear it's just a microcosm of what Jordan Peterson or Sam Harris's life would be. <laughs> it's people stopping you saying, hey, man, massive fan of your work, can I get a photo? Massive fan of your work, can I get a photo? Massive fan of your work, can I get a photo? Uh, we walk into, like, that hipster bookstore that I was talking about. You walk in there and you're just like, uh, can, can you point me in the direction of the, the store that doesn't have exclusively Kamala Harris books in it? <laughs> Is that possible? Well, there's the Julia Gillard file. Okay, well, we're getting closer. I'll go there. And Malcolm, current bestseller. Quote, it's his favourite bookstore, to give you an idea. <laughs> but we were walking in there and even in that place, out of them, Four out of five of the female hipsters there, massive fans. Um, you know, every single person that I've ever come across that is ethnic, massive fan. We walk out of that bookstore and Miss is just hanging around there after a while. And then they're all just being like, oh, my God, that was Friendly Geordies. Man, he does such good work. Good for him. Like, he's, he's killing it. Like, what a great guy. Then, obviously, <laughs> the chick. That is exactly what you would imagine. That classic triggered chick that is just the darling of 2016 internet. That one with the red hair going like... (laughs) That fat looks like a pear. Paler than like blobfish in the deep ocean. So that chick from Q&A with Jordan Peterson. Pretty much. Pretty much. She also works there. And then they're all sitting there going like, that was awesome. That was really cool. Uh, I'm really glad that he's doing what he's doing then that chick comes in and goes did you know he's also a massive racist and then all the other chicks looked at her and then continued talking about the good work that we were doing <laughs> like just completely isolated moved on and then miss and i were just saying man it's always the same fucking person isn't it it's always a karen that does not have the life skills to be a karen does not have the life skills to start up a small business uh, is just kind of a failure in life and isn't going anywhere because the other thing is that you were talking to those other four chicks and the other four chicks, where are they? They're doing masters at university. They're, this is their part-time side hustle. I'm down with the net. Her uh, fine art, clearly, you know, just maybe doing that. Like, just like, I have to stop because of stress. So 
Also, AUW, Panthera, Panthera, Panthera. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll continue. And so, anyway, so he just walks out and he's just like, man, if anybody ever comes up to you and just starts screaming racist, what would your response be? And I was just saying, dude, it'd be so easy to counter that. Uh, all you do is just tuck a cast on it. You just sit there and you ask a bunch of condescending questions and they won't have an answer because, again, it's such a broad term that is completely debased at this point and it's just an internet buzzword accusation, just like in the 50s, how you would accuse someone of being a communist and it would just be baseless, right? We walk into the pet store. No one's serving us. I go to the front. Wouldn't you know, an exact clone of that woman is at the front at Pet Bar in Bondi Junction. I say, hey, I was just wondering if I could get some fish for that tank. She says, no. And I said, why? And she said, because you're a racist. It was amazing. I was just like... Okay, welcome back to the Tucker Carlson program. Tonight we have some fuckhead from Pet Barn. Uh, why am I a racist? Asked her the question straight off the bat. Um, because you hate Aboriginal people. Why do I hate Aboriginal people? Because I saw a 15 second clip that was out of context and I was just saying that like, uh, and it was just like, so you got out of that that I hate Aboriginal people. Can you go into any depth of that? Of course you can't go into any depth of that. Baseless accusation. So you just sit there, you ask five or six questions. She's got nothing. She starts shirking back saying that like, I saw the 15 second clip. I saw it, I saw it, I know what I saw. Um, and, and so I was just saying, like, do you want to know the context of that? No. Oh, okay. So you're happy being ignorant about a subject that you clearly don't know anything about because you're, like, saying things that weren't even said in the clip, right? So he, she walks away. She's like, I'm not serving him. Are you going to serve him? To Obviously, as you would exactly imagine, some pale cuck male who's got trainee on him and then he says, no, no, I'm not going to be serving him because he's a racist. And then... Some legend who's just some uh, woman that also works there. Manager or someone. I don't even know if she was a manager. I think she was just another employee. She just walks up and she was just like, what's going on here? And I was just like, they're not serving me. Oh, and also, mm. sorry, at this point, I said, miss, do you have your camera? And he was saying, no, it's in the car. I, I like, left Fuck. it. Yeah. So we're going to go out into the camera and then go back and then just have the conversation recorded because it would just be amazing to put that out. But it was, it was the biggest regret of the day that Miss Love was charging his phone. God, that would have been some good content that would have got about 500,000 views. <laughs> and so we, uh, yeah, so she just walked in and then she said, what do you want? And then she went over to her there and she was just like, sorry, and quote, everyone fucking hates her here. She's a fucking idiot. Like, you know, don't pay any attention to her. I'll have a word to her. That was just shocking, you know? Walks back, gives it to her, and gives it deliberately to the trainee that was like, I'm not serving you. And so I have to get served by that guy where I'm just staring, I'm eyeballing him the entire time. And he's just sitting there sweating with his little pale, clammy hands being like, are you a member? No, I'm not a member. Uh, okay, that'll be three ninety five. Thank you. Have a nice day. And then obviously you just sign off with the sincere, like, well, I sincerely hope that you do not have a good day. And then left. Anyway, mm. that's what happened. But I would really really like to know who that was because I swear to God they would have gone on TikTok being like, I destroyed a racist today. Yeah. Because, man, this is what I learned walking around in the general public. And the thing was, I was served by Indigenous people today. You know what you learn? The only people that are fuckheads are hipsters. Everyone else in Australia is mad. Everyone else in Australia is reasonable and laid back. And like, you know, even if you talk to liberals, we talked to a liberal today that was just like, don't enjoy you, like, don't agree, enjoy your work or whatever. Like most people are just up for a laugh. You, you see the same people on Reddit, you see them on TikTok. It's the same human being over and over again. It is a friendless loudmouth who no one likes and is always pale. <laughs> anyway, that's what I want to get to in the Twitch. Why are they always pale? Can we get to that? I well, I I had a theory about that, but can I can I just say this? Like, you I am so proud of you the way you handle that because I was thinking if I was in that situation, if someone was like you're racist, I would probably just like turn around and leave. And that, but but you 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 stood there and you said, why do you think I'm racist? What do you think I've said that's that's mm. racist? No, he At the end yeah. of it, she probably thought about it and said, I shouldn't have just like hurled abuses at someone without actually doing some research because 
it takes a bit of a stretch to say that Jordan's racist. Like, <laughs> racism means that you actively participate in making sure that minorities or other races are somehow um, discriminated against. Yeah, repressed. And that's a huge accusation. That's a yeah, big thing. It is, yeah, yeah. Um, no, he. He's so I, it's just one of those things that you shouldn't throw around. I had a very no. This is what I. This is what I want to get out to. Every, we'll we'll get to that in a sec, but I just want to get to this point. <clears throat> Anyone who uses the accusation racist, homophobic, sexist is a fucking moron. Change my mind. They are the weaponized equivalent of communist in the fifties. It's a, it's a baseless word. It's gotten to that point where you just hurl it at anyone and anything, because that is the mainstream media's like go to attack to like destroy someone's credibility. Just like in the fifties with McCarthyism and they were saying you're a communist McCarthyism and then that was the end of your career. Mm. So someone accuses you of a communist, you're gone. That's what they it's, try and do now. But I think that really, I, I, I think that just like with McCarthyism or just like with witch hunts, Someone basically, I remember how the witch hunt stopped in the 1600s. I remember watching a documentary on it. You know what it was? One time, like, this pastor, like, it just got so insane that they accused a pastor, a fucking, pa a Puritan pastor of being a witch. Which, really? like, in Boston. how the fuck, if, if they're to believe their own superstition, how the fuck would that pastor be able to walk into the church without melting? You know, mm -hmm. like it got that ridiculous. And so he just gets up. Really? He's about to be uh, like burned at the stake along with like some house servants and shit that they pointed it at. Was this in like Boston? Is that uh, where they were happening? Like East Coast, Boston. Yeah, Boston was the, well, uh, what was it? Salem. Salem, Salem which Salem. Salem. It was close to it. Right, it right, a, right. It's a beautiful town if you ever want to go Right, there. right, yeah. And obviously Halloween's awesome. And let's be honest, it should be more famous for being the basis of about three quarters of Goosebumps books. <laughs> I thought really you were going nice to say town. Stephen King, but yeah, yeah. And, uh, same stuff, fair. same stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Goosebumps for adults. <laughs> Stephen King. <laughs> And they're both awesome. Hey, now there's a quote I can uh, I can get behind. In fact, right R.L. Stein and Stephen King are the best fictional authors. Changed my mind. Mm. But so we were, yeah. So he was saying this is ridiculous. So he got up. He waited until they tied him up. He could have just done this in prison, but just to show everyone how ridiculous this all was, he recited a Bible verse perfectly off his tongue, which again, they said that if they are not a witch, this was just in that Malefus Maleficarum book of how to identify witches, oh. they will not be able to repeat an entire Bible verse. And so he did that. And then the politician, obviously, that wanted him dead, because that's all it was. It was just a political movement to scare the shit out of the population to get carrying power. Again, the same thing of just ideologies just being bullshit. It's all just about gaining power. And like, he just wanted people's land. That's really what the Salem witch trials were about. He just realized I can get, he's a sociopath and he thought I can get cheap land if I just burn the inhabitants at the stake. Well, it's, you know? it's Different all, time. It, it was very targeted. It was most often cases of property. The same sort of principle applies. For example, when I was growing up in Pakistan, we still have our own version of witch hunts, which still persists today. It's just called blasphemy accusations. So really? most of these people that get accused of blasphemy yeah. and end up going to jail. Like religious are, blasphemy? Yeah, like yeah. religious blasphemy are just people that have um, have crossed someone else. So there's yeah. vested interest, they have properties. It's a way For to a whitewash lot, someone. It's not only just to whitewash someone, it's like a way to send someone to jail very easily. You can take over their properties. Damn. You can, there, there's always like political vested interest in yeah. this. Because it's like the point no made one is like fucking... Who wants to like really just do blasphemy anyways into a country like Pakistan? Do you think they're idiots? Yeah. So they're just they're just vested interests. Some of the times politicians that have vested interests, for example, they might want their property. They might try to acquire something. They're not giving up. They're like, well, this motherfucker just said shit about Muhammad. It's almost like the All bigger sudden, point you made earlier where you were saying, Jordan, where like ideology, um, ideology is just- It's a mask. The excuse for- uh, uh, mineral extraction basically like yeah well, but the like, thing was that priest it, whatever that you know or whatever equivalent you you want to use you know what I mean? whatever equivalent you almost you know. always use mineral extraction yeah, like just oil it's pretty much just oil and iron jesus and and like wheat 
Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, land. Or but whatever it may be, there's a always vested interest. of grain. And same <laughs> thing happens today with these titles like racism, I agree with you, where a lot of times these titles are used for people that they want to silence for other vested interests that have nothing to do with uh, well, racism so, or so ideology. Well, so Sydney Morning Herald, right? Well, not just Sydney Morning Herald. It's Everyone. Like, Hit pieces. If you are going to criticize about the current status quo, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, Jordan, you need to realize this. You're swimming against the tide, and you're going to face a lot of friction all your life. And it's and when you swim against the tide, people throw a lot of her yeah. abuses at you. I don't you know could if, be. Yeah. Do you know why, like, Auntie Donna doesn't fucking uh, get uh, any of this bullshit? Even though they say things that... M I'm not trying to put them down. They, they're more than entitled, but that was the comparison that was don't made, right? get in the kiln. Sorry. No, just, no, but, but, but all I'm no, saying but is they're is not swimming against the tide. No one has In the incentive. 70s, there was your comics like George Carlin... And then there's your, um, fuck, now I've forgotten his name, Johnny Carson's. Mm -hmm. You know? But, but, but even like, but you have a much tougher gig than these guys because these yeah. guys, Johnny, look, they were all, they were all people that would say something as long as it was okay for the Zide guys to say. You are not that. You are gonna, if you keep going in the way you're headed, this is a tough fight. And, and there, is gonna, a, there is a tradition of comics doing that. There is. Like there was Lenny Bruce, then there was George Carlin. Uh, later on, there was fuck. Now I can't even remember. What his about? Name. Oh, but, but were they doing it with like really same. legitimate political interest? You're playing with a different beast over here. You, what you're doing is like something that John Stewart invented, but then John Stewart never took it to the level where like he didn't right. become really antagonistic and say, "No, my mission is to bring you down." His he didn't do the barrel thing was like, "Look, I, I'm just saying, like Democrats are not that stupid, and Republicans are stupid, and here's a few jokes about that." Mm. He was touching with it. You, when you like, fucking, um, when you expose corruption, you're roughing up a lot of. There's a lot of people making money off of this shit, and mm. they love making that mm. money. Mm. And if you're gonna be saying this, you're directly, you're making their next Christmas worse. So you can expect. Well, yeah. I, 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 dude, I really do have to say this that it is. It, it does happen, obviously, but I will also say that I think that the average person is not actually duped by this. As in, th these are the three categories. People either know who I am, they don't know who the fuck I am, and a tiny fraction of pale, friendless, nervous cunts hate me. But, like, I thought that that was much bigger, Jeez. but it's just because those people are pale because they... I've answered my own question, because they spend all time indoors. Yeah, they never and they're like Because they're me. lazy. Yeah, and that's but why I have a balcony. That's the difference. This is like this is what I was telling Miss Love. That chick that was saying that you're <laughs> racist, the 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 worst thing about it is in her head she genuinely believes you're racist because she's she's been living in whatever her Twitter YouTube world and she's cemented those ideas. So she believes that you're racist as much as um, I don't know. Like we believe our gravity exists. She's so fucked in the head that she is putting someone being racist from an out of context 15 second clip as the same, same level of concrete understanding as like very accepted facts that we now believe in but, or like that we've discovered things like gravity. So in her head, when you say I'm not racist, you're saying it's equal to someone saying like, yeah, I, 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 uh, you're saying that the earth is flat because she is so fucking convinced yeah, in her head example. that you're a bad person. <laughs> and it's all based on the fact that they never, it, they're too lazy to actually look into it. Look, at the end of the day... It's very obvious. Well, that was the whole thing. Like, I gave her the opportunity. I was like, look, do you want to know the context surrounding... Uh, the, she was just saying, like, you just said that, like, Aboriginal people have to put up with invasion or, like, some something, like, so fucking off the mark of what was said or something. And I said, do you want to actually know what was said? Or are you just going to sit there and wallow in your ignorance? And she was like, I've seen the clip! You know? So she is admitting there that she likes being lazy. So, but this is all I'm saying is these people are bad people that are susceptible, the, the, the absolute target of these attacks. But I like the fact that in this day and age, we have the internet where you can just make your case. And that's why I think that uh, these, these tools, the, the general propaganda tools, the general ones that are just so ubiquitous, are not as potent as what they used to be. Like McCarthyism. But like McCarthyism, but it was the same thing with Communism. McCarthyism and it was the same thing with uh, this Salem witch trial. Like it was a Puritan mm. society, so I don't even think laughing was allowed. It was... It, Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know. They, they were like a really yeah. Christian sect of Christianity. Was that, ba was that sort of the era of the... 
The Witch, that film we watched. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was based off Puritans. of Puritan's Worst Nightmares, which is why yeah. it's such a good amazing, horror film. Amazing film. But they, what happened in that moment, and then the politician just said, no, nope, burn him. But the audience was sitting there and they were just talking to each other and muttering. And that guy kind of became the last martyr because he made such a mockery of the witch hunt that it stopped the witch hunts after that, that uh, before the state politicians were just ignoring what was happening in Salem because they were getting kickbacks and whatever. But then that message came and then they were just like, fuck, these people are really backwards. Mm. And then every time they got a uh, legal writ, it's exactly what happens in Pakistan now, right? Like it goes to the highest court but back then they just say, yeah, yeah, whatever, fuck it. For we'll get like a piece of that land or yeah. whatever. But then after that, they started looking at every single application of a witch, of someone being accused as a witch. And they all knew it was bullshit because they were like educated men. And so they just silently just say, no. Nah, so that was like denied. the straw that so broke the camel. Like it didn't become illegal. It kind of just got mocked into obscurity. Right. That is, the, 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 the parallels the camel to broke. the blasphemy thing are just... It's Uncanny. the same thing. It really is. Same, same thing. exact thing happens over there. So look, most of the judiciary also realizes that these blasphemy accusations are either false or political. And a lot of them are, they're like, even if they did, you don't want to kill someone based on that. But they can't acquit um, the, the perpetrator because uh, they're afraid <laughs> of the public glove, backlash. They're and afraid what? of the public backlash. They're afraid that they're going to get killed by the, the crowds for letting go oh, someone really? that had insulted the prophet. Right. So they're super scared. So the understanding, and the informal understanding amongst judiciary is this is how you deal with blasphemy cases. Once the lower court gets it, they will almost always pass a judgment saying that they should be killed. The, 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 the accused. It goes to the lower the Supreme court, court, did you say? The lowest court. Oh, yeah. and then it goes, to, it the goes Supreme, to the Supreme Court. And it's rejected. And then the Supreme Court will... They might reject it. They might uphel- uphold it. Right. But what you know for 100% is, sorry, our Supreme Court is the high court. So it's confusing. Anyways, the top court, the, the high court, yeah. their version of the high court, will always end up acquitting. Because right. Because they have the, the security because they're high, they're like uh, well-paid judges. Yeah. They have the security. They have the state apparatus to they protect them. And they don't have a, a, a like a hand in the game. They're not like... They can look, they can objectively say like, this is political. Well, not right? only can they say it, but even the lowest court judge that convicted them also thinks that, but he's too afraid to do it. And he knows ah. that eventually once it goes into the higher courts, the guy's right. going to get acquitted. So it's like the but high, the sad thing so is, are you saying that the, are you saying that the, the, uh, the mob can't, the, the, the mob won't go for the high court? It, because the, the high court judges, Supreme Court, like their Supreme Court judges are, they're, dude, wealthy. They're, 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 they're wealthy, they're wealthy, yeah, they're yeah, well yeah. protected, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, esteemed yeah. members of society, not gotcha. that easy to kill. Gotcha. And also they, they're brave when they do this, even someone yeah. like that. So it's the same exact fucking rule applies. It's, but the, the sad aspect of it is that even though all these blasphemy accused end up getting acquitted eventually, they might end up spending 10 years in jail because the process to get there, it's horrible. And Damn. it's literally witch hunt. It's just, you're ruining someone's life. Jesus Christ. Yes. And okay, but that's yeah. Okay. It's a tool that is used and echoed throughout history. Blasphemy, witch trials, McCarthyism. I swear this is the modern equivalent of it. Isms. The modern equivalent of it is like you know, like uh, you know, it's it, it's that same thing. Accusing them of one of these acts, and it's like what my lawyer says all the time. Like if someone accuses you of sexual assault. Doesn't matter if you did or didn't do it at that point. You're guilty. Try by guilty public court. It's by, by, by association. And by public. But like, by even if you get, even if she gets into the court and <laughs> stops and, and like proves like there's no fucking way this could have happened. They weren't even there or whatever. Exclusively, exclusively, do you think? What do you mean? Like, do you think there are cases? Can I just quickly yeah, do a disclaimer about that? Of course there's cases, but what I'm saying is like, it's like- the, the psychology. There probably was witches back in Thingo. <laughs> Like they're just we're just lucky that they're all wiped yeah, out. He believes in horror stories. You know? Of course, he believes in some genuine witches. But can I? Quickly- no, but you know, so there probably was crazies back then that believed in paganism or whatever, which yeah. is witch hunting or yeah. which is a witch. Like I'm, I'm saying, but it's these, very, it, they're yeah. probably based off a truth, and then it turns into a hysteria. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and yeah, that's exactly. what she's saying has happened to and the criminal mis- system 
for a lot of her clients where she's, you know, like the evidence is rock solid. It, it, it happened to Emma Huzar and Peter Slipper. Like they're, they are members of parliament whose lives have been completely ruined. And why? Because of power. Because Peter Slipper was the deciding vote in the Gillard government and was the speaker, so they wanted him gone. So they just trumped up a bunch of sexual assault allegations. And it's the same thing that happened with Emma Hoosar. Uh, she had a weak marginal seat that they thought they could take and they successfully did. Hmm. And so they got rid of her to mar the Labor brand in that seat. To yeah. a lesser extent, Shrad too, with just uh, phony yep. accusations, just completely fabricated and exaggerated um, situations about uh, corruption. Yeah. Quote, unquote, corruption. Can I just do a quick disclaimer on um, the, the domestic violence case things? You're, you're right, but here's how it works. So back in the day, whenever a, a woman would bring a, a domestic violence accusation, it was based on the evidence the police would judge whether there is enough ample grounds for this to be admitted and should they prosecute. That was the traditional way of doing things. And then what ended up happening was some of the women that were genuinely uh, being... Um, uh, basically beaten the shit out of uh, wrong assessment of the police allowed them to continue in that situation. Now, what happens now is, and this is the, the thing that a lot of people talk about is the biggest gripe. As soon as there's a domestic violence accusation, the police will not look at the evidence of how, if it's uh, if it, there's plausible, if it did happen, they're going to definitely prosecute. The other thing that's definitely going to happen is that you're going to get an AVO against you. So there will be, irrespective of how fabricated the accusations might be, on the surface they might seem really fabricated. Well, you know what else she was saying? She was saying in a lot of those circumstances, the cops would be going, that they were at the scene or whatever, the cops would be going to their constables. I don't want to prosecute this person because it's clearly fucking bullshit. They know it's bullshit, and the constable will be like, yeah, I know it is, but whatever, that's the procedure. They will, they won't, <laughs> it's too much of a political issue for them not to pursue this. But really? what, what ends up happening is that um, they get an AVO. So the media then says, this man, perpetrator of domestic violence, was accused there's of a visit, he is kind of house arrested, words. they might not get bail, because this is a hot issue. But after all of that is settled, once the case ends up going to court, then they don't get. Uh, they don't, they don't uh, find them guilty if the evidence does not add up. In fact, the test for evidence such as that is, is high. Um, so yeah, it's, but, so but the, the whole the, thing is the just like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because Especially if you've if, lost the court of public a, opinion. If you're a public figure, probably more, right, if, specifically. No, I think it's the other way around. I think really? I'm actually in a really lucky position because it always makes me realize that I can just go onto a podcast, tens of thousands of people will hear it, me just saying like this crazy chick in, in Pet Barn did this, but there was also... I, I want to say this as well. I think Pet Barn is a good organisation. They're the only one that started supporting the Animal Rescue Collective uh, during the bushfires. I think in general, they're great people. Hmm. But obviously, like everyone, there's cunts everywhere, right? Um, I can sit there and plead my case. True. But man, That's a good point. if you are not a public figure, if you can't get up on camera and say to an audience, this isn't true because of X, Y, Z, you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, I never, you're fucked. Of, I never thought about it that and way. And even if you're not big enough to get into the papers, because it's it could be prominent lawyers, it could be doctors, it could be politicians, all of these people's careers, done. Yeah, as soon as that accusation is done, yeah. gone, gone. And it happens all the time. I know this. It happens all the time in political parties. People would say, like, the accusation's bullshit. They'll say, we know. What do you want us to do? They're Damn. gone. And then, you know, all of your friends apparate. People that like were solidly backing you before, instantly gone. It's like everybody shuns you. I know because I've talked to some of these politicians who have been accused of this shit in the past, and like, you know, a, a, a pr I'm not going to say who, but you know, proven in court not to have done it. Mm. Dude, they're broken people. Like Emma, they, they, sorry, yeah. sorry, she got, she got. It's a, it's, yeah. she, uh, sorry, I followed her case. Do you know she was like absolved of all charges? Really? No one knows that. They think they'll. They Jesus. still think that she's like some deviant character. Yeah, they still she think she's completely that she is. absolved the, of all charges. And that was yeah. the that was same the, with Peter Slipper. That was the lady with the marginal seat. You were saying, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's a, it's can't a get a job. <laughs> There's and and That's but crazy. I think it'd be even worse if you aren't a public figure. Mm. Because you don't and have a platform. Because I, I, huh? you don't have a platform. 
well, you can't even defend yourself in the articles and say this is fabricated, even though that's not going to do anything because the mm. whole thing was like alleged, 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 alleged. They said they didn't do it. Alleged, 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 alleged. Yeah. That's it. That's the whole game. And yeah. how it works, obviously, as I pointed out in Friendly George. Uh, how do you feel a problem like Friendly George? Yeah. I think it would be even worse if you are not prominent enough to even be in the press. I think that would be the worst position to be in. Mm. Because just your friends and family, and she says it all the time, friends and family, rock solid one day, they get that accusation, they get marred and dirty, everyone abandons them. I've seen it happen to a guy in front of my eyes. This exact thing. Mm. So look, I don't know the facts of this whole thing, but this guy, when I met him, he's 19 years old, right? He's a kid. Uh, I'm 25 or something. He so this kid, he's uh, he has like all these friends and and he's like this little happening kid and he's go, he's going to parties and that one time he comes to me and he tells me that this girl uh, accused him of sexual harassment two to three years ago. So probably when he was 15 and she was around the same age. Um, look, I don't know what the facts of that are uh, and. He told me that none of that happened. I, in fact, like, I don't even remember because I've never actually slept with the girl. And he was saying that maybe I was hitting on her. Um, but, like, I never got frisky or anything. This is coming from him. But what, what I see as a consequence, irrespective of if he had done it or not, all of his friends, these really, really close people, gone. This kid, irrespective of if he done it, again, I don't know. Um, has serious mental health issues, breaks down, everyone is abandoned, everyone has abandoned him. Uh, the only person that still is taking care of him is his mom. <laughs> Completely crashes, two years of his life. By the way, this kid, um, really smart, is like one of the toppers of, at his law school. He was at mm. UTS Law. Leaves everything. One year later, I meet him now. Mm. He goes back to law school. He's killing it. He wants to be a diplomat. He's like super focused now but he was telling me how like that entire thing it just it killed my self-confidence mm. and again according to him for something that he hadn't done yeah it's yeah. I, I i really think that this is like a it's 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 like a really really insidious weapon yeah to use that as a tactic and, against someone is like but i know that this happens because i talk to people in politics all the time oh dude wouldn't surprise and me everyone's all scared shit. men women all of them terrified of the m word in south park you know it, that thing exists mm. it's a deliberate tool just like in the witch hunts and things like that obviously we've got to say again of yes it does happen but this is the other thing that you'll notice about it as well because there will be much more credible claims of it and there'll be celebrities that everyone likes and they're all in the little bubble circle and they'll get protected in the press. The press will give them a nice little write-up saying that, no, 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 it's obviously not credible, that's bullshit. That, that's the way they'll write it. If you're against the press's interests, they'll do a foley on you. It'll just be accusation after accusation, just with the word alleged in the front, then just everything, you know, like allegedly he's a serial killer and this is how he killed the bodies. And uh, allegedly, we said allegedly, so we can say whatever we just want now. Power you know? plays. Hey, it's just power plays. It's just sort of like chess. Well, that's it's what I'm like, saying. It's just like it's the tactic. people. Yes, exactly. The people <clears throat> that use this. It's like the AUWU. How you guys going? Um, Ding. They will use that as a tool. It's, it's got nothing to do with them actually, like, caring about this issue. It's the same thing with the witch trials. It's that they wanted something mm. out of this. These people do exist. That's the main point. And the victims mm. also exist. There's no denying that. But the... Uh, it's all in the... It's the it's, details. It's, it's not like, even about the details. It's like, look, no one is denying that a lot of horrible stuff happens, including yeah, um, dom domestic yeah. violence, yeah. Uh, sexism, or like the example that I gave, serious sexual harassment, which is not okay. But it doesn't happen every time. And you in, know not in all cases is the guy completely guilty, but the accusation is a fucking atomic bomb. Mm. It just For either sex, the guy. for either sex, right? Well, it's, it, this is the, it's not just me. Yeah. It happens to, it happened to who's up? Yeah. It can happen to anyone. This happens. Who's my that? Female, my female lawyer was saying the same thing. She's always running against the grain of the legal system. 
They've done the same thing to her character. They've tried yeah. to do this to her in the past. It's She's like, a very good defense attorney and she has like a rock solid client base, but you read any press release about her or any, any sorry, any uh, article about her post her being on Beauty and the Beast, it's savage, just absolute vicious really? viciousness to the point that anybody I say like, this person's my lawyer and then they look it up. They're just like, how could you speak with this monster? And it's just like, dude, she is uh, uh, fucking fighting the good fight. Yeah. That's Defending why she's that- getting this in the press yeah. because yeah. she is actually out there being like, you fucking judges are corrupt. So they're just like, bam, character assassination. Yeah, This is another thing that I'm gonna be getting to when I do my video in response to like some other accusations in the ABC about just, uh, I don't know, friendly Geordie supports genocides and stuff like that. Um, I will be saying this, that people are always saying, and I want to see people's responses in the comments to this because I want to see if this uh, flows on and this is tight. People always say, well, here in Australia, you can say whatever you like. (laughs) You know, Mm. tell that to fucking Julian Assange. Tell that to me. There's so many things that I can't say anymore because I have, it's not because of me. Like, I have a lot of opinions on, like, this trade war right now, but I'm completely keeping it shut. And honestly, yeah. it's not because of what the impact of that is uh, on me, because I, I don't care. I believe in these things, and I'll take whatever. If I'm you afraid go against of you. I'm afraid that I'm going to fucking put you in some situation. Yeah. You, shouldn't, so you, you shouldn't be, because I am... In this country, I am afraid to if you to go against the opinions. narrative if you go and against the not, narrative they're not crazy opinions yeah they're just like we need to strike they're a balance diplomat opinions basically yeah. but, but i'm diplomat afraid opinions. i'm genuinely afraid of it things. is changing it's like i feel like even in the 90s for instance if there was a if there was a situation let's say we had the exact same situation with china now situation you know whether it's take that how you will what's going on with china now in the 90s i feel like and i could be wrong here but i feel like the dialogue could be a lot more rigorous and um, kind of even even let's say dramatic on each side. Do you know what I mean? Like there should there, there could be more rigorous discussion on either side of the approach. Call it left or right or progressive or conservative. It seems as if, um, and I don't know why, but it seems as if that's not the case now. It's like it, I, I don't. It's strange. It's I, I, it, it's a, probably a million reasons. It's probably it's probably very calculated. Who knows? But. It's strange. You should be able to, you know. I know. Freedom of speech allows you to say whatever you want. I would, (laughs) even because I really don't care what happens to me. I'm okay for my convictions. When it, when look at the end of the day, dude, I'm on Jordan's podcast, and I don't want to like fucking put him in some situation. So you shouldn't be scared about this because we've said everything. Our views are very open about China's, and I'm glad because you know what it does. Like with all of the things, and this is something that people are always saying, like, why are you saying stupid shit on the pod? I think just let the chips fall where they may because most of the time on this podcast, sometimes I'll word things badly or whatever, but we're right about them. We're just going against a propaganda model. And so people just go, I can't believe you said that. And then you're just like, here's the facts. And they say, oh, okay. So it brings out the lies that you're constantly being fed. This is what's happening, I guess, with, uh, with your, you talking about what's happening with China. Dude, no, no, no. Things that Ali has hey, said. I'm, the things that, I'm always here to be like, they eat dogs. Yeah. They're screwed up. Don't worry. I'm. A, <laughs> there's a reason I'm in the middle, eh? Yeah, yeah. I like Yumcha, but I don't the like eat dogs. And the Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, dude, don't sense like, it. Like, you don't, you don't know, stress, like, I'm you glad know. that you are saying these things because it's forced me to come out and say, look at what happens when you point out facts about and this is the thing that i will be honing over and over again so aspie who also watches this you can clip this out of context <laughs> and you should be fucking scared uh this I love is that one of the most evil like a, an organization like yeah. that Dude, you know what an else? organization that, that is china like- is afraid of they're saying <laughs> do you know how, like they've they've explicitly they've banned aspie yeah oh, china yeah, has course. banned aspie from uh from, from their country uh, aspie is an illegal organization in china as it should be, um, yeah, and well, this is the and whole they thing. are they've been like sp- 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 I'm not going to get into this. But what I'm just going to say about them because I'm going to be getting into this in detail in an upcoming video that's going to be like the friendly Geordie's cancel uh, how to solve a problem like friendly Geordie's video. But I'll just briefly say, Oops. you look into Aspie. 
The things that the Chinese are saying about Aspie are the same things that Michael West and Marcus Rubenstein, who are some of the best journalists in the country, are saying about Aspie. And the thing is, it reminds me of that Winston Churchill quote that, at the end of the day, truth will remain. Some will try to deride it, some will mock it. But in the end, there it is. You know, oh, the like Bill Clinton one. Uh, you can fool some people some of the time. No, that's Abe. It's not Bill Clinton. No, it's Bill. Is it not? I thought that was Bill Clinton. As if Bill came up with that one. No, but I think that he's wrong. I think that you can fool most of the people all of the time. No, if nobody's can you fool there all to, the people all the time? You can't fool all the people all the time, yeah. but you can fool enough people to get elected. Definitely. You can get um, but... Yeah, it's it's like th- this is just what Michael the, the things that China are saying about Aspie are the same things that Michael West and Marcus Rubenstein are saying about it, and it shows you just how uh, debauched and corrupt our media system is that they will not let those views be aired. But it's fucking terrifying because Aspie is pretty much the IPA of foreign policy. It is the most influential think tank when it comes to foreign policy in Australia. It pretty much just calls the shots when it comes to foreign policy in this country. And they're glorified weapon salesmen. Mm. I don't think that that is the best people to be in charge of our foreign policy. People that are trying to constantly manoeuvre Australia to being ripped off in a bunch of... The submarines is a perfect example. Tony Abbott was looking at the subs and saying, okay, these ones from Germany are like 10 billion. We'll go with those. And then Aspie came in and said, no, you're getting the French ones. And then Malcolm Turnbull comes in and says, yeah, okay, we'll get that. They were eight times the price and they weren't built. Mm. The other ones, we would have just had the subs. Terrible deal. we got the 10 deal. billion ones, we would have had the subs now. Terrible deal. Terrible, terrible deal. Terrible but this is what they're doing because they're weapon salesmen. At, even if you want to get more hawkish with China, you don't want people sitting there that are fucking essentially... Guys that work at cash converters going, you want my advice? I think you should go with this. <laughs> what up. about the argument that the, go- it's the Chinese the same government? Thing as like if you, sorry, what, sorry. About, what about the other argument that the Chinese government uh, plays the same role as Aspie just on a huge scale? Doing what? Like, uh, you know, they have a military. They have, I, I obviously, I'm not saying but that. Here's the thing they don't have weapons manufacturers advising them on that how their they, military they, they should be built. They have companies. generals and strategists right. and They probably diplomats. have their own versions of vested interest think tanks. But do you think? I don't think they do. I'm, look, the, uh, I'm sure they do. There's, there's these kind of actors play a role in every political society. I think it's, it's just, just that constant to, thing that people are always saying, oh my God, China's becoming a real threat really fast. Yeah, because they can get shit done because they don't have a bunch of these like neoliberal leeches just sitting there sucking all of the fucking resources out of the country. And like, they've just got one direction just being like, boom, oh, we need more aircraft carriers, we'll build them. No, I Instead of them just going like, no, 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 get these 80s helicopters. Well, look, <laughs> look, I, 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 I'm glad we talked about this and you're gonna go into detail in an upcoming video. And so we'll move on from this topic. Sorry, like, we will move on to yeah, this topic, yeah. but what I'm saying is that- Well, sure, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just curious to be honest. I'm, I'm just listening, like I'm just curious about it. Cause it's like a nuanced issue, surely. It's well, a, it's it's a secret issue, and that's what really scares me. It's that just like all the time. I just want to get to this. I want to. This, okay, this sorry, is sorry, actually okay. what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. Whenever the Liberal Party is in power, the worst possible people are in charge. Sure, I'm not going in I'm everything: not foreign policy, the environment, schools. But just you agree one the, last the, addition, I can't resist. What? The Liberal Party or the current government or your cabinet, when they say something to you about their opinion on China. It might be slightly different to their opinion backdoors. Um, while <laughs> while Scott <laughs> Dome Kang says Jordan's worldview, CIA responsible for anything bad, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but can I, can I just say this? Like, like in terms of the nuance, can we at least agree that uh, I'm not disag- I'm not disagreeing with that, that. I'm just but but like it doesn't it doesn't. Uh, maybe this is a bullshit point, but it seems to me it doesn't simplify the issue that China is, you know, somewhat secretive and blase with facts and figures, generally speaking. So it doesn't simplify, myself, like we have to, we have to debate whether they're everything I, I, we don't know, we don't know. Every power is. Every power is, of course they are. But you know what I will say I'm not saying they're not. You know what I will say about their new system? This is the point that I was getting to. It's, look, you think that your news, I've got all these epic quotes that I was just thinking about a lot, but you know that quote from, 
okay, I'll, 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 I'll put that for a second, but you think because you are told by your new system that this is the most honest new system on earth and this is a democracy. Yeah. And everybody gets to say whatever they like to say, forgetting the fact that if you say anything against the Liberal government, where are you going to go? ABC, that's run by the Liberals, Nine Fairfax, Oh, I wonder what Costello will think. I think he'll give you a good hearing out, won't he? Rupert Murdoch? Oh, even better. He's going to give you a good hearing. If you say anything that is counter the narrative, it's that tree falls in a wood argument. If it falls in the forest, does anyone hear? Right. And does it matter? And I honestly think when I'm looking at the Chinese and Australian propaganda model, this is the difference. In the Chinese propaganda model, they think that one tree falling in the woods does matter and they'll clamp that down. And in Australia, they're just more lazy and they think it doesn't fucking matter. And just as like, Miss Love, you know how you were saying that China mm. botches up figures? I'm sure, I'm sure that's correct. And I remember after COVID, um, there was a lot of, particularly Americans have this opinion that China was hiding their figures, mm. right? You, you hear that often. Yeah. And I, at that point, I said <coughs> that maybe they are, but they couldn't be. Here's, here's another fact. For all of those, for all those that were saying China is like a horrible uh, country, I mean, I'm sure they're horrible, but like that they're hiding their figures. Mm -hmm. China, according to ABC, is projected to grow in 2021 by 9.2 percent. Mm -hmm. That is an incredible figure. I know it, it might not sound crazy to you. No, it most is crazy. developed countries it is crazy, grow at yeah. around 1.5 to 2%. But yes, this is the argument percent. that you always hear. The, the counter argument to that is always because they're developed nations, so it's a slower growth rate. But yeah. here's the thing. They've been saying that about China for the last 30 years. Mm. Mm. It's still growing. It's And it's it's growing. It's grown. China, like that, that theory is yeah. now gone. And these guys, I don't know, dude, whatever the fuck they're doing, they're turbocharged. Nine point... This is a monster that you're going to have to deal with for the foreseeable future. So just be wary of who we pick fights with. An and organization, you know sorry, sorry, just, just like an organization, a, a country that's growing at 9.2% with a 1.3 billion population with a, with, by the way, one of the greatest coronavirus strategies, if let's, maybe it's wrong, but I feel like you wouldn't be able to achieve it if you were, you wouldn't be able to achieve 9.2 if you were hiding those figures. While you have another power that we are backing that is still fighting over whether masks are uh, effective but or not. There's a broader, but there's a broader See, question here though. <clears throat> there's a broader question because when you start to come into that sort of um, argument, then you start to go into, well, the axis of power, the global, the global, uh, or the the global order of power, like I think the bigger pro the bigger question that people it is uh, the the fear in the West is like it might be irrational, but if America falls, it's too big a risk. I'm not saying that that's is, necessarily true, and, and that I'm is a saying, genuine concern. That's what it is. People are looking at it being like these are huge global shifts in like control and power. This is like, are we going to let the the cat out of the bag and then it won't be able to get back but, in. But and I know that's like oversimplistic. But miss, here's the but problem. I think that's- We are a country of 24 million people. Unfortunately, we don't get to call those shots. No, 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 of course we don't. And you know what actually like wise people always say to me behind the scenes when I talk to them about this and they're just like, I'm always saying the anti-China hysteria in the media is insane. And they say, I agree. But you wait until China becomes a superpower. And you will see that that media will shift over you reckon? and become anti-American hysteria. Really? Absolutely. No. It really just that depends on where the power fault up, rooms are. Yeah, that, that would yes, be equally, equally fucked up. up but that's what I'm point. saying. It's just yeah. like the reason that you hate China is because you thought you came to that conclusion. You didn't. It is because of the environment that you're in. But do you think there's a, do you think there's a valid argument to the point of, let's not pretend like we know what the fuck's going to happen here if America falls to falls by the wayside and like mom, mother China becomes uncontestable. I can say you can obviously have guesses because of the historical track record and then people always just go into this crystal ball reading no, I get, yeah. that China's just going to be terrible. You just don't know that yet. But the sure. thing is, those people don't know that either. Sure. But also, how do you think, Miss Love, how do you think, so uh, in this world, this nightmare scenario, which I'm I don't necessarily, I know, I know, I know. And I, and I want to, and I want to explore that yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's, it's a genuine thing. So yeah. let's say the US collapses and we've got China as the only superpower. That is, that's a scary prospect even for me. However, how do you think US is likely to collapse? Do you think it's by allowing China and no. making sure that everyone gets the same? Or 
they collapse internally. by having a fight with them. Absolutely, dude. Like, or maybe China me- collapses after having a fight. No, look. So Amer- do you think if we keep fighting them and that fight goes through and there is a World War III. I don't want I, I think that bad. nightmare scenario, I hope it doesn't happen. But like I'm saying that nightmare scenario of Jewess going completely down and we're left at the mercy of this massive uh, China monster is more likely if we have an antagonistic approach agreed. as opposed to if we have- I totally agreed. I agree with you. I agree with this you. I totally agree like with Paul you. This is what Paul Keating and Kevin Rudd are saying. I agree They're with saying, you. look, if you want to remain a superpower US, Let's make you're going to have to give, some give concessions. people breathing room. Some concessions. You can't yeah. control yeah. Basically, these Basically, the entire anymore. fight is yes, China is saying we get to call shots in Asia Pacific and the US is saying, oh, we'll yeah. see about that. You know exactly. what else? That's in the fight. Obama's book, apparently, I was just hearing from the gatekeeper because he's reading it at the moment and he's just saying, fuck, Obama's just Malcolm Turnbull. <laughs> he's not He's not the, the, he's not the very loyal rat anymore. He's got the gatekeeper. Well, either or, rat boy, gatekeeper. <laughs> it's the same dude, spoiler alert. And I'm a fan of both of those nicknames, Me too, by me the too, way. I like them both. Um, but yeah, he's reading it at the moment and pretty much all he does every day is just ring me up and bitch about that book for an hour, which again, just like hearing about sports, very happy to hear that. <laughs> And he's just saying, if you want to, if you want to hate Obama, you read his book. Really, it just melts oh, no, away the this, entire yeah. image that he has, and he pretty much just sits there and is just like, "Reason I didn't do anything is because I thought it'd upset people, and I don't like being around people who are upset." <laughs> so I just sat back. Joe Biden, on the other hand, was really annoying because he'd constantly be pushing me for for me to do something. So I'm kind of hopeful about Joe Biden after reading that because apparently he was always like a dove when it came to other countries because he was pissed off that the CIA tricked him into going into Iraq. And so every Dang. time the CIA or the Pentagon was in the Oval White House, Joe Biden would storm in and be like, what's going on here, Jack? What are you doing here? Hey, get out of here, fat. And then like Obama would just be like, oh, please, please, everybody settle down. I yeah. don't like conflict. Yeah. Like, the other thing that was in Obama's book what? about Joe Biden being a dove in fact, this is the reason he said that this is the reason why he released the book after the elections because he didn't want Joe Biden to be affected by it. During the um, Osama bin Laden assassination or like the, um, the plan, uh, the covert operation, Joe Biden was against it. Joe right. Biden was really? saying that you can't just send a hol- helicopter Into to t- a sovereign country. You are f- this can be potentially disastrous. Fair uh, point, really. And Obama's opinion was, yes but I'll take that risk. Which, uh, he was entitled to do it. Mm. The, the only well, the difference was him. like, no, they wait. assumed that the Pakistanis would get pretty crazy, but now we know in Obama's book, in fact, when he called the president of Pakistan and said, um, he, Obama was assuming that he's gonna get angry and mm. we're gonna have some confrontation <coughs> that will eventually be settled, but this is gonna get bad. When he told the president of Pakistan that- Hang on, guys, sorry, can I just hear this? Is uh, uh, have we tuned out? Can somebody just respond for a second and say if we're live? Why? What's wrong? Oh, I'm just reading a couple of comments, just saying that the oh. feed stopped or something. Just comment. Oh, is you it, are live. Thanks, it? guys. Thank you. Okay, sweet, okay. sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah, shut up and listen. Try to, try to, try to. Anyway, um. so it's, uh, yeah, so uh, basically, Joe Biden was like a bit of a dove on it. Uh, mm. The president of Pakistan to Obama and everyone that was a surprise said, look, whatever the public reaction to this would be, and it could be bad in my country because you have just come into my country, you violated our sovereignty and this could be yeah. bad. But I want to say this off the record, what happened today was a good thing for the world. And I'm glad that Osama bin Laden's dead. This is not only good for your country, this is also good for my country. And Obama was shell shocked. He was like, fuck, that's not a reaction that I expected. His counterpart called the army chief of Pakistan, delivered the same news. We had a covert operation. Uh, we've just confirmed the assassination of uh, Osama bin Laden. And the army chief's response was, we're taking over the scene. And he uh, puts the phone down. What do you mean we're taking over the scene? We're taking over the scene, the actual scene. Cause like, Why? Because the army, in, I, and I can imagine, because from another perspective, the foreign minister apparently was in the room with the army chief when this news was delivered to him. And the foreign minister said that I looked at the army chief and it seemed like the floor beneath his feet had just gone away. Why? Because what he thought was, fuck, how am I going to cover this situation? My countrymen would feel very violated by it. 
my army would feel very embarrassed by it that a foreign power came in, without assassinated, detection. without informing us or taking us on board. How am I going to manage that situation? Mm, mm. So his first reaction was, I'm just taking over the scene so I can manage, uh, minimize the damage mm, as much as possible. Mm, mm. And the president was saying like how it was a good thing. But the point was that Joe Biden was against the operation. Joe Biden mm. did not think that you could just... He wasn't against killing Osama bin Laden. He was saying, you need to take Pakistan on board. Obama made the call of like, it's too risky. It's too big of a target to do it. Pretty They're much just the... Points. <laughs> that should be the title of Obama's book. Obama's first term, too risky. Too what risky. about Obamacare, though? Obamacare... You know what's amazing about Obamacare? This is what Ratboy was pointing out. He's so fucking right. In fact, I was just like saying to him, he was just saying, can I write a, a script on this? I'm going to do some research into it because people are always asking me, what's the difference between America and Australian politics? I'll tell you what the fucking difference is. Is this going to be controversial? The <laughs> most extreme... It's, it's just fact. Yeah, yeah. The most extreme policies of Howard, how much I decry them, are like way more mild than Obama's. Right. It just depends about the political okay. context that you're in. Yeah. So, for instance, when it comes to healthcare, this is what Howard did. I've done videos about this in the past. To fuck over Medicare, he says, okay, well, I'm just going to give tax rebates to people to get private healthcare to prop up the private health insurance industry. Cunty thing to do. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Uh, s- kind of spooks people into thinking, fuck, I need to get healthcare. Unnecessary too, Unnecessary right? healthcare. You know what Obamacare is? You have to get healthcare. And you have to get it from a fucking private organisation. Yeah. Which they now, will- you can say that that's better than the healthcare system that they had before, and I will agree with that. But how much more extreme yeah, is that yeah. than even what Howard did? That's a good point. I never thought about it. It's you know, a scary you know system. You know what's and you know what else? This is another interesting thing because I was just listening to like, because I'm just very interested in China at the moment and I was listening to this uh, official talking about what would Obama and Trump be in China. And he was saying Obama would be like a fringe lunatic like Ron Paul in the CCP. Like he'd be tolerated. And they'd, they'd sit there and they'd just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's Obama's crazy stories again. And they'd just get on with business, right? And then they were saying, what about Trump? And they'd say, there's no way he'd be there. And they're like, why? Is he too right wing? And you know what? And it, it fucking exemplified everything to me between the two separate. He said, no, because he's never done anything for anyone in his life. In China. <laughs> are you looking at that's me? A, well, I mean, because it's like, it's a good fucking point. It's a good point, isn't it? Like... Isn't it, it says everything you need to know about those two different systems. Hey, build the wall. <laughs> yeah, that was for us. Uh, but China but did too, just saying. Yeah, True. dude. Yeah, True. they built that wall. But they, just say but Trump the difference didn't is do they that. Actually Mongolia built was paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, I mean <laughs> but to say Trump did what? nothing for anyone, like he, he instituted no, 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 before policies. Before that. Before oh, that. Before government. He hadn't done he anything for public service. So in China, How can oh, public anyone give service. you the top job when you have public done nothing service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for people? Well, that was his appeal, right? He's a businessman. He's going to make money. Well, in China, they were saying that if you want to be the lowliest official, as in like a neighborhood captain, which is actually a nice little system that I didn't realize that they have, which is that there is kind of, I guess, a justice of the peace on every block. Just some delegate that you can go to and say the garbage hasn't been picked up or something, and they're just like, "This is unacceptable." And they're just like, but they'll go talk, right? They have those. So there's like that's, always yeah, someone kinda, that you can talk to. This, Whereas we just have like the fucking strata manager guy that you walk into, sh- and he's just like, "Fuck off, pay your." But beat. surely there's some <laughs> conflation huh? between making money in private business and public uh, and a public office. I know, but they both involve like doing things. This is the whole thing. There's Everything a that Trump did is just about yeah, okay. enriching himself. Right, right. Everything true. that, like, if you want to get a position in, like, the lowest position of the CCP in, in, in China, yeah. you have to have done something. You have to have gone but dude, to Bernie the Sanders fields made a and, and worked on, like, a, okay. a government-run farm or, or something. Sure, but, like, Bernie like, Sanders had a wage. What? Like, it's not just, like, charity. Like, huh? Bernie Sanders had an income. The same as someone who has a private company has an income. Like, I understand the distinction, but there's a similarity as well, right? Huh? No, well, Bernie Sanders, for a profession, this is how he gets paid. First of all, he gets paid a lot less he, yes, than he does. his, his yeah. private counterpart. All I'm saying Secondly, is... Secondly, yeah. he... he has spent his entire life serving the public. And to Obama's credit, he has too. I mean, not but, his but entire life. But do you see the difference between Obama life, yeah. and... But do you think there's to, to Obama's credit, yes, he was a community organizer, which is the kind of thing that China would be looking at if they wanted to get someone into the CCP. But 
<coughs> and and in China, that's an encouraged thing. In it's the not US, even encouraged; it's mandatory. It was something that Obama was told why he shouldn't be the president for. He was said, "How can you be a president when you were a community organizer?" But he had you, a really good point. That is like, what do you mean? What kind of people do you community. want in politics? Like, yeah. Like you think that's a bad thing that you've been serving people? See, the thing is, for, the thing the thing is for me, like Trump on paper initially, I was like, yeah, this is a crazy idea. Um, this is a crazy idea, but it could work. It's like an experiment. It's like a guy. I'm not talking about his character. Let's just not even Trump. Let's just say a businessman that made a lot of money, irrelevant if he was corrupt or whatever. In theory, a businessman that's made a lot of money. Let's say uh, the guy from fucking. Jeff Bezos or uh, Zuckerberg, even though I think their char- the character of those people are pretty fucked. Let's say a businessman that was in- that had integrity, whatever. Um, I thought it was an interesting experiment, the idea of being like a guy that is a successful businessman mm-hmm. to take that uh, ethos and 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 just put it and jump into public office and apply a similar um, like those principles of like you know. Um, you know, it's just the whole conservative talking point thing. Like the whole thing of just like not running in a deficit. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I thought it was a good idea, but the Trump experiment failed miserably. I, so the, I'm curious if you guys think it's even possible if they, would that, do you think there'd be a possibility? Uh, Cause I get what you're saying with the China thing. Do you think there could be a possibility that a person that is like essentially a, uh, a businessman could, uh, could translate those, ideas from private to like being a successful yeah, I think public it's like office. Nick, Neil deGrasse Tyson's point, which is that once you're a hammer, you see everything is a nail. So you that's his that. point about so? there shouldn't be. I just don't believe in that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I just don't believe in the, 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 the theory that you're putting out. I'm well aware of it. It's a very, I'm not saying uh, I believe it. I'm a, a very uh, liberal way of looking at leadership. I just don't think that's an accurate way of it's looking not the at real, it. That's what I'm because asking. Yeah. Um, what you want, so uh, 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 a private enterprise. So look, uh, the, the argument is this, that in private, in the private sector, it's a lot more competitive. It's a lot more competitive. Your, your skills are way more refined. You understand how to do deals. You have to be more and economical. And you can bring those skills into the public office, yes. which needs them. So I understand that point of yes, view. Yes. I think this is a flawed point of view right. because first of all, most leaders that are in uh, positions of uh, power it's not that they don't they don't have the skills because they have a lot of advisors that are giving them really good information. They would have advisors that are arguing from one point of view and then you have another advisor that's arguing from a completely different point of view. Mm. So it's not that they lack the intellectual capital. What you need in that position for a leader is to be able to make that decision based on what would be best for public, would be the best for public service. You don't think it's transferable though? I don't think it's that transferable because you can hire those people if you think that those business acumen or that particular like investment banking skills that you have are really good, you don't need that guy in the top position. Who you need in top position is that someone who has proven Deal with people. Uh, who has proven that his motivations in life are not self-serving. His motivations in life are to serve others. And you demonstrate that not by what you say, but what you do. What have you done in your life? Have you just made money for yourself and for your shareholders? Or have you sacrificed some of that money in order to help your society? I were suppose, you a community organizer yeah. or were you a lawyer for an investment bank? Are you a Malcolm Turnbull or for that matter, are you a Tony Abbott? But surely there are some ethical Two different kinds of individuals. Enterprise. I would much but prefer sure, okay. a stupid Tony Abbott than a smart Malcolm Turnbull. But will you Turnbull. concede this? Can you concede this? There yeah. are public officials that are terrible and misspend money and are lazy and do shit all. And there are also uh, corporatists that aren't lawyers and bankers. There are like- Ethical. I'm sure they are, but how how do I know? What have you done to prove this? Don't tell me what you think. Because show Trump, me what you've done. Because Trump, I think, I think Trump was a failure because if you really look at it, he was he is self interested. He is superficial. He is and like what he did as a presidency, he's a swindler. Yeah. Now, I'm not even making a value judgment on that because he is a sick swindler. Yeah, he's a really really good salesman. I just but think that's what he is, and that's how he. But and I that's just think, still how he's running today. And like you see all these marketing moves where he's just saying, "Instead of going to the inauguration, I'm launching my campaign for 2024." Yeah, he's, he's, I get it. I just think it's naive it's, to it's say. Cool, I just think it's naive to say that there couldn't be like a Ron Paul figure that could actually do a good job in government. That's all I'm saying. I think that Ron that, Paul I has done really so much for public service as well. 
Ron that's a good Paul, point. That's a good Ron point. Paul has been, a, dude. What has Trump done? That's true. Except I agree. Come up with that birthing controversy. I agree of, with uh, you. No, I agree with you. Ron he's, Paul he's is amazing at individual. coming up with marketing points, and that's what he had. I'm telling you, it's yeah. just whatever you are trained in in life, that's how you're going to see life because the human brain can only no, pick course. up so many things. Which is Neil deGrasse Tyson's point that there's too many <laughs> lawyers. Agreed. In all Agreed. Western politics. I agree with you. But see, totally. he was saying there should be more scientists in politics because yep. what do scientists do? They look at evidence. Yes. And then they make a judgment based on evidence. Yeah, that's, that's a good what point. What do lawyers do? They don't give a fuck about the evidence. They, they think, they, how can we make this evidence yes. fit my case? That's they, a good point. Their entire point is about arguing a case. Now, see, that's I find point. it really yeah. impressive that lawyers can do that. I think watching a sick barrister tear someone oh, apart skill. is mad. Yeah. yeah. But it's not a good way to govern a country. Right. So rather the so rather the question doesn't become if you're a, if you've spent your life in private uh, enterprise or public office the the question is don't the question is what have you been, are you a scientist or are you a banker something more along those it's lines. Not, it's not like specifically I agree with Tyson's point like there should be more scientists but for any organization if you went to Commonwealth Bank today their hiring managers would mm. tell you that the best way to improve efficiency of your company is have a diverse bunch of people. So if you're a banker, you yeah, just yeah. don't want people exactly. that have studied finance. You want people yeah. that have studied biology. That's a good point. Because what that biology major is going to bring is something that the finance wouldn't. Totally. So for any organization. So it's really about the cabinet. Yeah, yeah but, but again, let's cabinet. just point this out. It's the cabinet. Not this bullshit ABC, SBS diversity. Quotas. Diversity of mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's that what goes you meant. Without Diver- <laughs> yeah, diversity of, yeah, absolutely. Well, I suppose we are. And maybe you can have a a couple of, uh, you can have a few private individuals too. I'm just not a big fan of um, private sector people coming into politics and then pretending to be really righteous because I I don't see that in your lifestyle. What have you done? You've just made money for yourself. But there are public servants that are leeches as well. They just suck up funds. Scott Morrison is a perfect example of that. (laughs) But no, he was was in marketing. He was in public service. But in the bureaucracy, bureaucratic marketing, what a great combo. He was working for a private company, didn't he? The Telstra of No, no, he did work for a government market. Yeah, it was. Heaps, heaps. Yeah. Well, that's a perfect example, right? Because people, because people, because look, people on the, people on the, on the right in America uh, try to paint Bernie Sanders as this like lazy, uh, uh, like fun sucking, uh, like you know, dude that just sort of like constantly whinges and just hasn't done anything, which I don't think is accurate. But like, I'm, all I'm saying is like, though, look, the Scott Morrison is probably a better example of someone that actually just leeches funds. But dude, it's like what you know? he was saying about the last three liberal prime ministers. Out of all of them, I, I if if I had the choice, I would prefer if Tony Abbott was still in power because at least he has the conviction. at least he had some conviction yeah, in life. Yeah, like. What's Ma- Scott Morrison's? He's just a shit Trump. He's just a shit, yeah. uncharismatic Trump yeah, is, that's yeah. a crap salesman and was not good at being a salesman anyway, but people, yeah, you know, it still works. There's still yeah. The technique still work. Malcolm Turnbull, merchant banker. Wow. <laughs> what a know, great yeah. human being he is. Tony Abbott, trained to be a monk. Tony Abbott does a lot of community service. He is like, a fiery. He used Surfy. to go out to indigenous cultures all the time and help them out with uh, building shit. Mm. He used to do these things. He, he has public service drilled into him. I, I, I stand by what I said in the bushfires video. He earned the right to lead. I do not think that Malcolm Turnbull and I do not think that uh, Scott Morrison have. Yeah. Everything about their entire life yeah. is self-serving. Tony Abbott's yeah. policies were probably... Look, if you look at it, if you look at my uh, my outlook on how the world should be, I'd probably be much closer to Malcolm Turnbull than I would be to Tony Abbott. But I would still prefer a person like Tony Abbott as my leader. I can give mm. him respect because... I know he truly believes in what he's saying. He's not yeah, just saying it. Like yeah. it might be something that I don't agree with, yeah. but that guy believes in it. And you and know I what? I want someone that genuinely believes in something and also has <clears throat> uh, cares for society to be my leader. I might mm. not like I might not like your policies, but I am more than willing to accept you as my. And you know what's a good point minister. as well that I've just realized that I was talking about it, which is your point really. Um, you don't necessarily. <laughs> You don't necessarily go into public service to make a ton of money. No, you just there's, don't. There's do other that. ways to do it. There's going to be yeah. way worse people in specific private industry. Probably the majority, like banking, like all these sort of. You know, I'm not saying they all are, but like, there's going to be more people there that are self-serving than than in community. Just, just, just commu- this right? will freak out. Orchard, I'm paying attention. But keep going. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so you're right. Like, I don't think someone's going to be like, I'm going to make a ton in like the Chicago Community Center for Welfare. Like, there's some people that might try to rip it off, but like, there's bad people in every industry. And if you look at numbers, there's probably there's definitely way more worse people in in Wall Street than like uh, St. Vincent de Paul. <laughs> Don't you think? Man, I'm telling you. Look. <laughs> so I'll give you that. It's true. It's definitely I'll give true. You that. You, I remember this. I remember because I had a meeting. I remember the early, early days back when pedestrian used to like me. I remember walking into pedestrian's office and feeling like I needed a shower straight after. <laughs> the entire ethos was about making as much fucking money as possible and it was obvious when you were in there. Straight after that, I had a meeting with, I think, from memory, the nurses' union. And I was just talking to them about what was happening to healthcare. They're all good people. We saw them the other day, we just did. like having lunch. They were They're very all nice. friendly, considerate people. Yeah. Yes, I'll pay that. Like, and think about that. Trans- the people, like, yeah, yeah, transparent too. The people whose entire life is thinking about how to stick up for the greatest people in society. Mm. Is there anyone better than nurses? Maybe fireys. Like it's it's up there. I'll pay that. One of those two. Yeah, for sure. Every nurse you ever meet is a legend. Yeah, yeah. Those, they, they're sitting there thinking about how to stick up for those people yeah. all day versus walking into pedestrian where they're sitting there <laughs> thinking about how to sell the Commonwealth Bank and look lit at the same time. Can I, can I have a question on that? Can I just ask something? What? If, if, you, if you guys were to make an argument, this is just for my own, this is, very, this is a personal question. If you were to make an argument or you were asked to make an argument, because in that respect to what he just said, capitalism equals bad, essentially. That's what... That's kind of could be generalized. You could say that. How would you, uh, how, how would you guys argue? How would you guys argue to somebody saying like, no, 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 capitalism's good. Here's the best example of a capitalist. Would you say Scandinavia? Like high regulation, try not to be that greedy, you fuck. Be good to the environment. Look, I will say that Scandinavia, I hate these terms. I hate them so much. But if you're going to say it, the, the term that is always used by the economist or yeah. when you go to uni and you yeah, yeah. study in economics, they always use the phrase cuddly capitalism. Right, 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 right. I'm just curious because... The Norway system, I think everyone will agree or want it to be... They'll, they'll all say that that is the best system on earth. Mm. And... I think that this is actually where it gets into play and people always, and I'm always saying that you can scale out these programs. You can scale out these programs, but what happens, but the problem with scaling out these programs is getting everyone to fucking agree on it, which is easy when you have 4 million people, you know, like it's like, it's a lot easier to get a labor government elected in fucking Queensland than it is federally. It's like the downside of you know? democracy, right? It's like it's slow and lumbering and it might change and then it'll change back real See, quick. See, this is my whole thing. I <laughs> honestly believe this and I've been talking about it recently, but I swear democracy is a scam. I swear it doesn't exist. <laughs> All right, and on that note, <laughs> it's time. If you want to know why, join the podcast. <laughs> no, actually, we need, to, we, need to, we need to do a quick, quick oh God. Uh, we advert. We, oh yeah, okay, do that. So here's the thing. Look at me. So- we are looking for a very particular type of person to join the Friendly Geordie's podcast team. Um, Pretty much the exact opposite of podcast, man. <laughs> no, well, we're it, not saying it, that. That's a, he's speaking it's, for himself. It's a, it's a different job. So we don't, we're not looking necessarily <laughs> for an editor or a community manager, but we would re- what, what we're looking for for the podcast at the moment is a good producer. Someone that is engaged with the zeitgeist of the moment, knows what's happening, What's what what our audience is into at the moment? Um, not what not just what they're into, but also understands what society is into. So, if you worked at pedestrian, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, for you. if you worked at pedestrian, how much street, should we be saying lit? Yeah, yeah, is lit well, still lit? But there's that. But also, uh, also like um, what you should be able to I do heard. is provide us with clear segments that you think might work. So basically, a producer, and the way you do this is, I don't, I don't, we don't care like. What, what uni you went to, what, like, what medal you got for your bake sale. What we need is, if you're writing a f- maximum 500 word um, paper that tells us, first of all, a little bit about you, what motivates you in life, and secondly, 
how you can contribute to the podcast. If you want to do it through Damn. writing 500 words, that's fine. If you want to do a slideshow, we don't care. Just make, don't make it too long because we're going to have to go through a lot of these. And, and sorry, yeah, we did learn from experience that it's probably not the best hiring strategy in the future moving forward to just someone being like, can I have a job? And be like, I don't see why not. So we do need to do this. Sorry. I'm sure you're a very nice person if we reject you. And you probably will be. So <laughs> the way you send Democracy. us an email on podcast at friendlyjordies.com. Um, if you're interested in this, if you think you would be able to contribute, again, preferred is some sort of experience in, in, in radio or anything, but it's not essential. Like if you're good at, if, if, you're you, think you, can, if you think you can do this, then send us an email, podcast at friendlyjoys.com. Again, maximum 500 word if you're sending us another slideshow, whatever, whatever works for you. And just focus not on your credentials, focus on how you can contribute to the podcast and um, a little bit about yourself. What I think a more accurate term than producer would be view slut. We want somebody who knows exactly what's happening and what's going to get clicks so we can just seep in more propaganda Maybe to the public, like, really. Someone uh, sort of like apolitical. <laughs> No, no, it, 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 there's no, you know again, what? there's I, no wrong opinion. There's no wrong opinion, but I think the right opinion would be if you say, I think that you should have that little green box and your face going in every clip <laughs> like Joe Rogan does. Yeah, yeah, Look, yeah. I'm I think that's how it works. <laughs> I'm sifting through the application, so. Just be a there's, there's, there's no, there's no re, uh, political opinion that we're looking for. You can be literally whatever, even if it's something completely against what we believe in. We're not interested in what you believe in. Come on, What we're interested in is how, how much you can contribute to us. And you just, maybe just don't hate us as people. If you like us as people, that would also be preferred. So, if yeah, you're that interested. That is definitely not essential. <laughs> if you're interested, podcast at gmail.com we would be uh we're looking forward to your applications estrogen filled people would apply here <laughs> there's one over yeah here. there's a lot of that come on but also we don't need another one nice if you were a little more decisive we don't need it okay i'm not perfect but we don't need to on you two or another one of the the uh the gatekeeper just being like we're gonna just like let's shed a fire in the in the office but it's an office we'll get kicked out just do it yeah let's be honest need that. hiring the gatekeeper was pretty much just hiring alex jones yeah, <laughs> like, hey, yeah and there's yeah. room for that too but anyways thank you People for joining us need not apply <laughs> anyway go on thank you for joining us tonight for this podcast thank you um, that was an expose wasn't if it? you haven't already subscribed to our youtube channel please do so uh if you if you like the podcast consider becoming a patron on patreon it helps a lot um, <laughs> it bag. certainly helps us if you want to hire a veterinarian i'm your guy yes i am interested send send in send in whatever whatever you can um so <laughs> and for those of you that are our patrons we'll see you for the update podcast Unfortunately, we couldn't play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire today. Next but time. We'll do that next week. So thank you, and we'll see you next week. You do realize that game exists, right? Just so you know. <laughs>